Ladies and gentlemen, once again, give me welcome to senior night at Mustang Panther Stadium. I'd like to recognize our seniors who are now on field with their essays. Begin with the football team. Number one, Luke Ulrich. 
parents Adam and Rachel Holt. Number two, Zach Token. Parents Joe and Marcy Token. Number three, Ryan Kelleher. Parents Pete and Vicki Kelleher and Brother Nate. Number four and five, Ty and Hayden Golden. Parents Jay Golden and Jennifer Golden. Number six and number 31, Jacob and Joe Rapolo. Parents Judy and Dick Rapolo. Number 10, Ty Pruitt. Parents Stan and Christy Pruitt. Number 11, Joey Miller. Parents Joe and Katie Miller. Number 15, Steve Cole. Parents Russell and Tamara. Number 19, Alex Burke. Parents Johnny and Marie. Golden. Parents Justin and Ashley Golden. Number 27, Fiona Bailey. Parents and siblings, Malachi, Barbara, Malachi, and Fiona. Number 29, Robert Shelton.
Here comes the senior cheerleader, Mia 
And welcome into Mustang Panther Stadium tonight. It's the Colleyville Heritage Panthers and the Polytech Parrots. Alongside Gary Harris and Duke Crow, I'm Doug Branch. Hopefully Trey Francis will join us as soon as he finishes his obligations at the University of North Texas. But Gary uh, got through a wrench into the plans tonight. And uh, instead of being a Friday night game that looks like it's going to be in the middle of a uh, thunderstorm, or, or a downpour tomorrow. They move senior night to Thursday night, and uh, everybody accommodates. We're here to watch some football. Shout out to you, Doug. You made yourself available at a moment's notice, um, and it doesn't go unnoticed because if we didn't have this broadcast, the senior folks and the folks that follow the seniors across the world wouldn't be able to see um, their sons, daughters, parents, etc., that had put in four years um, of time at the high school. So I'm going to don't say much nice about you, but I am going to start off with thank you very much for making this possible. Well, I, I guess I could have actually opened your mic up in a timely fashion to allow you to do that. So I touche. Uh, <laughs> since you don't say much nice, I keep your mic off, right? You do. You do. And we're looking forward to a really good football game tonight. 
Um, Polytech is one in four in district. They come off a win last week, so it's good when you know when the kids can come in with some hope. Um, the, I suspect they know that they are outpersoned, if you will, um, out depth, if you will. Um, but they won 40 to 37 last week. Heritage is uh, a lot better than that. They're a lot deeper than that. But this will give our guys an opportunity to continue getting better for a run to the playoffs. And personally, I want to see a lot of the guys that are the second and third string. I've been to practice. I've seen these young men work hard. And in the pregame, um, as folks will hear probably at halftime, uh, Coach Edwards mentioned he, he told the guys, play like you are a starter. And those guys have been doing that since the, since the start of the summer. So it'll be good to hopefully see them get the opportunity to shine tonight. All right, I'm going to mute you real quick. Switch to the other headsets. Colleyville comes into this game off a 56-7 thrashing of Northside, Fort Worth Northside last week. Of course, Colleyville 5-0 undefeated in their district. Uh, and Gary tonight uh, with a win, I believe they clinched the district championship. And that being said, give us your keys for Colleyville tonight to get to the victory over the visiting Polytech Parrots. Well, and, and that doesn't mean feed them crackers. Yes, yeah, okay. we won't we won't feed them any crackers. Hey, this is a lot better headset, by the way. Yeah, yeah, you um, like that? I you like, like not having to hold it up? Yeah, I like that. I got yeah. two more down there. I just set the wrong one. Oh, out. this is awesome. Sorry Thank about you. that. I, the keys of victory will be to simply execute, not have penalties, not have any turnovers, um, and Heritage will win because Heritage has them. Um, out talented at every position across the line but again uh, this will be an opportunity for heritage to continue uh, uh, several things that I like um, that we mentioned at the beginning of the season not a lot of penalties not a lot of turnovers I looked it up this morning Luke Aldrich has 19 touchdowns and only three interceptions think over the last five years without saying any names uh, we went two games and had three interceptions you know sometimes three in one game right and that is a significant key for Heritage to be successful going into the playoffs. So let's look for clean execution, no penalties. And, Doug, the other thing we haven't seen this year, I'm going to say the dumb personal fouls. We haven't seen any of that this year. So Coach Edwards, when he came in, he said he was going to clean that up, and he has done that. So I have to give him credit. Discipline, And we will be disciplined right now. We'll step away for a moment. When we come back, I'll visit with head coach Jerry Edwards. That's live from Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine. It's Colleyville Heritage High School football on the Panther Media Network. Back in a moment. You have a dream. The dream of having a pool and a backyard oasis. It's time to talk to the professionals at J. Caldwell Custom Pools. From new construction to remodeling, service, and maintenance, J. Caldwell Custom Pools is your custom pool builder and outdoor living design experts. Your dream of having a pool with spas, fountains, and fire features is about to come true. Dive in and find out more at jcaldwellcustompools.com. Proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Plastic Relax, enjoy the we're your neighbor, we're your friend, and when you're at Classic Chevrolet, we consider you part of our family. Enjoy honest, upfront pricing, the largest selection of new Chevrolets in the nation, and fair, competitive payouts on every trade. It's consistently in and out in 30 minutes, uh, no haggling, no problems. Classic Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference. Better Faster Urgent Care in South Lake is a proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Better Faster Urgent Care provides immediate care for acute, non-life-threatening illness and injury, all of which is provided by board-certified emergency physician specialists. They provide care for the simplest to the more complex medical conditions and have become prominent figures in our community's health care network. Compass Church is a loyal supporter of Panther football. Multiple locations across Northeast Tarrant County, all navigating people to God, offering online and in-person worship. Welcome back on the pregame show. Joined by Colleyview Heritage head coach Jerry Edwards and coach a big victory last week, 56-7 over Northside. But God decided to throw a little uh, uh, a clinch in the plans. We're going to audible and a game on a quick Thursday night setup. How do you prepare the kids for that when you expect something else today? Well, you know, we prepare all year for any type of adversity that comes our way. And I told the kids, I, you know, I think it'll be good for us, you know, because when you get to the playoffs, it's any time, any place, anyone. 
Uh, and so that's kind of our mantra, you know, is what I told him. I said, you know, we got to be prepared uh, anytime. You know, we got our four days of practice in. We actually practiced this morning, and then they got the call at 11 o'clock that uh, we were going to try to move it to beat the weather, which is best for our student athletes. Uh, you know, no sense coming out here tomorrow and waiting around the locker room for six hours. So, uh, you know, our kids are ready. I think they're focused. You know, this late in the season, uh, you know, these kids are resilient. Slow start last week's game. First quarter, probably not the way you wanted it to go, but then they come back and they show that. You talk about the resilience. What do they have to do to try and make sure they don't have a slow start when you come up against a team that's the same caliber? Well, yeah, you know, I told them in the pregame, I, you know, I told them, I said, man, guys, we can't seem kind of loosey-goosey today. And, and sure enough, it showed, you know. And so at that time, you know, I told them, I said, hey, we can't be like that. Uh, and, you know, we got to learn how to play to our standard all the time. And, you know, I know it was on a Saturday in a different location we hadn't been in and, and all those things, and we were heavy favorites in that game. And But, you know, we got to lock in and play our style. We got to focus on us and do what we do best. Uh, and then if we get a lead, then we can pull off a little bit. But we got to throttle up from the get-go. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot just a touch. It's senior night. Talk about some of your seniors that you've had time with this year. Yeah, you know, it's a very small group, uh, you know, coming in in March and getting to know these kids. There's 20 seniors on our football team, uh, and those kids have really embraced uh, what me and my staff have brought uh, and done a tremendous job. And, you know, I think it starts with Luke Ulrich, you know, our, our senior quarterback who's really bought in and, and did everything that, that we've asked him to do. And then on the defensive side, Ty Golden, uh, another senior guy in our defensive ends, uh, Stephen Cole and, and Jacob Rapolo. You know, those guys have kind of been the leaders for us on, the, on, on those respective side of the balls. And there's so many of them, it would be hard for me to name them all, but they've all contributed and all done a tremendous job of welcoming me in uh, and buying into what we're doing. And, and it's showing every Friday night. So we talked about the seniors you just did. Now let's talk about the guys that came in in the second half last week when we got the big lead. It didn't look like a major fall off in, in their competition. Yeah, well, we tell everybody, you know, be prepared. You know, you're you're a player two away from being a starter, and so everybody practices, and you know, and we tell everybody to prepare like you're a starter, whether you're starting or not, because you know you might get in a big game and have to go in and know the game plan and execute it well. And I think it builds, you know, some camaraderie where we know we're getting our best. You know, I told our kids this week, I said, take pride in being on the scout team. I mean, there's not a better offense and defense that you're going to go against each and every week. Uh, than, than what you're going to see on the other side of the ball. I mean, you got a defense holding opponents to seven or less points a game and an offense scoring over 40 a game. I said, you know, that's pretty good good on good competition there. And so it, it iron sharpens iron, and our kids will be able to do that. All right, I can tell you're about to lose your voice. It's been one of those weeks. Yeah. Give me your keys to get the victory tonight over the Parrots. Well, I think we just got to start fast and do us. You know, uh, focus in. It's senior night. Uh, there's been a lot of, uh, of different changes, you know, obviously the game didn't move, uh, but being able to overcome that and focus in on what your job is uh, and doing it extremely well and play to a high level. Head coach Jerry Edwards, when we come back, it's the kickoff for Mustang Panther Field. Back in a moment. ISC Roofing is a locally owned general contractor and construction company which manages roofing projects hands-on from start to finish. We can also help you navigate each step of the sometimes complicated insurance claim process. If you suspect your home's been damaged by Mother Nature, give IFC Roofing a call and see why they're the highest rated and reviewed roofing general contractor in DFW. Listen, folks, I got a little story for you. But where I get my comfort food when I'm feeling down in blue. I drive down South Wide Chapel to the feed store barbecue. Specializing in insurance for self employed, small businesses, contractors, families, and individuals. Tailor made PPO health insurance. Reach out for alternative solutions this open enrollment. The team at Unified Health Advisors is ready to score a touchdown for you. I've got one. Would you rather eat at Costa Vida and not be allowed to talk, or you can talk, but you're not allowed to eat your sweet pork burrito? Oh, really funny, guys. Costa Vida means a fresh take on classic Mexican, like hand-rolled tortillas, sweet pork burritos, and honey habanero salsa made from scratch. I'm gonna go order a sweet cinnamon tortilla. Want one? 
redefine your favorite Mexican food. Escape to Costa Vida today. Wow! It does not get any better than that, does it, Gary? GHD, can you hear me okay? I can't hear anything. I does not get any better than that, does it? Absolutely. We're on. Talk to me about what you heard. Okay, are we on live? We are. Okay, well, perfect. Well, let me let me do a couple things. One, um, shout out to GCISD for moving this game um, away from the downpour expected tomorrow night. A lot of um, planning went into this. And then, uh, again, since I was off before, thanks to you, Doug, uh, for making yourself available on such short notice. Without you, folks across the world wouldn't be able to see um, their sons, daughters, um, et cetera, uh, on senior night. Instead of across the world, let's just say across the Colleyville Heritage Panther world. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's <laughs> I'd like to think we have people from across the world watching. Actually, now well, we that do. we've got the YouTube stream that's, up, that's what I mean. we very well could have people watching. Uh, doing something a little, little, a little different tonight. We've uh, done a little upgrading. Uh, and, folks, you should be seeing a better picture. It should be a 720 HD picture on your computer or on your television. If you are using YouTube, you can search Colleyville Heritage Panther Football. You should be able to find it that way. So we encourage you to, uh, instead of, uh, what is it called, they, uh, casting it to your TV, if that's what you normally do, you should be able to watch it on YouTube TV. Kicking off, Landon Dressel for Colleyville. Colleyville all red. Kickoff goes down to the two. It's muffed there. Returning it to the 10-yard line and to the 11-yard line, and that's where the parrots will be knocked out of their tree. Or is it, what does a parrot sit on, by the way? Is it in a tree? I guess they could be in a tree, right? Tree, perch. Perch. They knocked off their perch at the 11. That was uh, number 25, Jose Valdez, on the return. Colleyville will send their first team defense out. And because they just put up the graphics, we will go ahead and drop ours out of the picture because we don't need it. And, Doug, you know I'm a CD, CB dad, so I watch the CBs uh, very closely. It's great to see Hayden West back um, out starting, so he must be over the injury that he had. All right, there you go. You get everything. Thanks. Uh, by the way, we would not have this uh, video and uh, the score bug and stuff that you see without help from the Grapevine or uh, GCISD uh, audio visual team here at the stadium. There's a pass out to the left hand side that stopped after we'll call it a three yard gain out to the 14 and uh, Gary a reminder that you know everything to go with the video that you're seeing tonight is by high school students so please keep that in mind if you don't see something that you would like to see uh, it is because we've had high school students that are just learning how to do this but you can see we've got a down the line field shot right there we should be able to get some excellent stuff here's a throw this looks like it could be picked off that should be interference so and one, it wasn't called Jaden hall was there yeah one it's amazing that the the district is giving uh, high school students the opportunity to get experience in broadcast media. Yes. I, I am all about that. In fact, I'd like to talk more about getting them involved in the games with statistics, etc. That said, great play by uh, cornerback Jaden Hall. He's been doing that all season long. He was able to see the quarterback and the receiver, and he would have picked it had he not been interfered with. Copy that. Coming out the near side, quarterback wants to throw, got a man up the sideline, and he gets a foot down. It's caught at the 37-yard line, and that'll be a first down. Anthony Shepard.
can't say that I'll ever dislike that name because that's my son's first name. But Anthony Shepard receives the pass from quarterback, I believe it's number eight, yes. which would be Terrell Jones. Oh, I, I tell you what, let's give a shout-out to the Polytech coaching staff. They are better than they were last year, and they're executing. Well, and, and you know who their head coach is? No, I don't. C.J. Wilson. Oh, really? Former Dallas Cowboy C.J. Wilson. Got it. Got it. Here comes Colleyville showing the blitz. They back out. Snap back, wants to throw. Pressure up the middle, gets it away, just throwing it out of bounds, and they're going to get him. Now, here's a call that I think is wrong. They're going to call roughing the passer. He jumped up in the air, and they got him by the feet. That that was not roughing that the passer. That can't be roughing the passer. I'm sorry. Well, it is if the referee calls it. I know that, but it's it's it's, <laughs> a, it's if we see a replay, and I don't know that we will, but the quarterback jumped in the air, and when you jump 30 inches up, what are you going to grab? If you're aimed at his waist, now you get his feet. Yeah, I agree with you, Doug. It, it shouldn't be pass interference if the logic is that he was hit low and he jumped in the air. The other thing I would tell you, shouldn't be pass interference. In, I mean, uh, um, roughing the quarterback anyway. The guy was in his throwing motion, and, the, and our guy had contact with him. What's he supposed to do once he has contact with him? Yeah, they called roughing the passer, and that's, uh, that's a joke, I just have to say. I haven't given the officials names yet, but the quarterback jumps in the air trying to get rid of the football. I, I, I don't agree with that. Looks like Evan Naida, our star um, defensive lineman, didn't start the game. I saw his hand getting wrapped on the sidelines, but it's wrapped now, and he's in the game. And they've got him out at right defensive end. Snap back, looking to throw. Colleyville with a horse collar tackle, but it's not going to be called as he did not grab the back of the jersey. Who was that that came flying in there, Gary? Was that uh, Darian Lloyd, 38, it, I think? It was Darian, Darian Lloyd. You're right. That one was, I think, um, unnecessary roughness because he made contact above the shoulder pad. Absolutely. Uh, but, hey, shout out to Darian Lloyd. He's having a really good season, and in my information is he's taking a, an unofficial trip to the University of North Texas this up upcoming weekend. Very nice. Like to hear that. Second down and 16 from the 49 for the Parrots. Full Colleyville coming with the blitz. Quarterback gets away, throws it downfield. There's good coverage there, and it's they're going to call Jaden Hall for, a, for interference. Well, their wide receiver, number two, Anthony Shepard, he looks like he's all of six foot, six one. Um, and Jaden Hall is probably 5'10", and I love him. It's just when that ball is tossed in the air that way and you go up and you're, you're hand fighting with him, you know, you've got to be able to attack the football. Well, where you have to go is you have to go inside of him if you're shorter. So, wait a second. They wave it off? Or are they going to mark it? No, they're yeah. going to mark it from where it was, and it won't be a first down. It'll, uh, well, is it, it should be an automatic first down, even though it's not first down yardage. Yeah, it's 15 yards. And yep. Automatic first, I think. So the Parrots are down to the 36-yard line, and they're they're showing lots of pressure, but unfortunately they're not able to get to Terrell Jones. Well, that and you have to be disciplined. Would you say Terrell or Terrell? I'd say Terrell. But Terrell. Okay, we'll call it Terrell then. But the pass rush is getting there, but they have to be disciplined. He's gotten two good plays when he's gotten outside the rush of the ends. Snap back, looking left. Drills one over the middle. Shepard's got it, and Shepard is going to take this one to the house. Touchdown, Polytech. Well, coach said don't underestimate any uh, any opponent, and Polytech has come to play. They, they, they definitely are ready to play on, oh, I don't have to keep score. They definitely have come to play here on Thursday night in Grapevine. Well, anytime a team comes off a win, that team has got positive momentum that whole week, and that's what's happened here. So we have a football game. The extra point will be attempted by Hector Marinez. It is up and it is good. And with 9.43 to play in the first, the Parrots lead the Panthers. I'm going to say there's not many times you'll hear a Parrot beating a Panther, but it's happening now. Timeout on the field, back with the Colleyville first offensive possession when we return in just a moment. Professional headshots That's for the modern shocker. executive. In That's studio, the only guy they've on got. Location. Relaxed, fun, and comfortable environment. 
Let Tracy capture the headshot that will get you noticed at Metroplex Headshots. Discover the power this team packs with their diverse backgrounds and award-winning talents. Choose Mark Hontel and Gilchrist Real Estate Group for your real estate buying and selling needs. Specializing in South Lake and West Lake, one billion plus in career sales. Texas Air Systems, providing commercial HVAC solutions through creativity and collaboration. Together, working with you to take on big challenges that produce even bigger results. Back in Grapevine, where Colleyville Heritage Panthers trail here early in the first quarter to the Polytech Parrots, 7 to nothing. Polytech took the ball 80, well, actually 79, no, 89 yards. 89 yards for a touchdown. Yep, with the help of two penalties. Colleyville's got it coming out the near side to the 20, to the 25 with a blocker across the 35 to the 40, and down around the 44-yard line is Hayden West. Or is that Hayden Golden? I think that was Ty Golden. Oh, Ty Golden. Yes. Got yeah. it. Uh, so I, but I'll get it right in a minute. You, you will. Um, I like the assertive run back by Ty. He went back. I think the, the kicker kicked it further than I had seen on film. Um, so I think it surprised him. But, hey, he adjusted, got it, and just took off. And it was a very assertive run and gets us in really good field position as you said, the 42. Ulrich's got the football for Colleyville at the 42, their first possession, 935 to go here in the first quarter. They trail by seven. Big night for cornerback from Polytech number 28. James Queen, he's out there man-to-man -man on, on Braden Blewett. Yeah, Blewett beat him right off the line. Handoff, though, inside, and I believe that went to Kelleher. It did. Ryan Kelleher picks up, we'll call it four, out across the 45 to the 46, second down and six. You know, offensive line has been doing a really good job all year. Ryan is averaging about five and a half yards per run, and then Colin Bennett is averaging almost seven. Motion comes to the near side. Snap back. Luke wants to throw. Blew it over the top. I think he hit him. Got it. Oh, wow. We have not seen that happen. I'm literally holding my hand over my mouth. I have not seen Mr. Blewett drop anything. Um, although, I'm sure they're going to go right back to him. You're right on the first play. I mean, he beat him. Braden Blewett beat him right off the line. But it is a big game for number 28, as I said, James Queen. I know when Reed was playing, he was looking forward to play whoever was the big wide receiver in the Metroplex. So he's up for it. I don't. I think he's – well, look, they've already look, made the yeah, adjustment. They've well, got safety over but their, the sa their safeties are 30 yards off the line of scrimmage. 20. 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. This should be easy. Kelleher, right side, got room. Beats one tackle, beats two tackles. He'll get the first down, down to the 45 and into Parrot territory. That's a big-time run. So – what you see from a strategy perspective is Polytech said, we're going to try man-to-man, -man, see if it works. Well, it didn't work, so now they put two safeties back deep. And so now the numbers say to run, and what did Heritage do? They ran. Right now they're showing man coverage across the front. They look like they're short one player. Three, six, no, they aren't. They have 11. Ulrich from the shotgun, Kelleher to his right. Snap back, wants to throw, right side caught. Block over there, it's Zach Sogan. Tate breaks a tackle. He'll go for 14 yards and another Colleyville Heritage Panther. First down. Just like that, Colleyville down to the 31-yard line. First down, keeping the chains in front of them. Really good play. I love how Luke put his foot in the ground, put that ball out there on a, on a line, um, and then Zach took it to his 14, 14 yards per catch average. Kelleher, left side this time, gets grabbed by the face mask. No call, and he's... Imposing his will for 13 yards and another Colleyville Heritage Panther. First down. So Polytech is oversized on the front four, front five, front six. So Heritage, as we expected, was gonna is going to run the football um, at will, which is good. Um, but you know Heritage has some big time wide receivers. I like all four of our guys and their mismatches. So I think it's going to be a a balanced approach. But I know Mr. Blewett wants the, wants the ball now. He's got to make up for that. 
Officials conversing on the near side. That, not, not sure what about. That drop might have been the easiest catch he may have had all year. We're used to him going up over guys and high pointing. I don't know if he just didn't feel comfortable catching a regular pass, Doug. Uh-oh. Oh, well, they might have got the face mask. Okay, I didn't see a flag. Neither did I. But they went 15 yards farther, so definitely they caught it. Colleyville now first in goal from the nine. Trailing by seven, trying to even the score. Ulrich takes the snap inside hand. Oh, no, he keeps it himself, and he will lose the football. This may be a touchback. Unless they call him out of bounds, this could be a touchback. Hopefully they call him out of bounds because he lost the football. They called him out of bounds at the Boy, way. that's Thank fortunate the right there because he lost the football, but he stepped out of bounds before losing the football, so Colleyville will have it at the one. He was trying to reach it across the goal line, and if you don't control it when it goes across, and they're not going to have any replay here. Right, he's slapping himself on the helmet. I think that's going to be another critical experience for him, and hopefully when they watch film, other guys, when you get to the goal line, just tuck it. If you make it, you make it. If not, then you don't, but you don't want to extend it past the goal line because that would have been a touchback. Thought he had given it to Sione Vallehi, but he had not. Here's a oh handoff God. inside, that's, and I don't know that's who. That's the lineman. big feather. Look at <laughs> that's a touchdown. 78, Tristan Rodriguez oh takes the handoff. Gosh. And for the first time this year, Rodriguez is in for a touchdown. On senior night. What a, what a memory. Just like that, Colleyville marches 58 yards with a Ryan Zuckert extra point. Graves to hold. Burgess to snap. We will be tied at seven. Kick is away, and it is good. Collierville knocks it at seven, 731 to play. Back with more for Mustang Panther Stadium in a moment. Become the best athlete you can be. Pure performance will help you get stronger, faster, more explosive, lose weight, get out of pain, and be in the best shape of your life. Pure performance. The best strength and conditioning gym in Colleyville. Leading every generation to know and follow Jesus. Back once again at Mustang Panther Stadium alongside the Godfather, Gary Harrison Ducrow. I'm Doug Branch. We hope to have Trey Francis joining us uh, just after halftime. Had prior commitments at the University of North Texas. Landon Dressel will kick off from the 40, Gary, and a nice answer for Colleyville. Yeah, big-time answer. Not unexpected, but you have to go out and you have to execute. And so now I'm intrigued to see what changes will be made on the defensive side. I suspect they'll still keep going after the quarterback, but you've got to be disciplined on Keep him from getting outside. That's where the the um, hurt has has happened. Something happened to Landon Dressel because he absolutely drilled that football out the back of the end zone. Oh wait, that, yeah, that was Dressel. It was. Yes. He uh, he hammered that just over the M and Mustangs, and it's going to be a touchback. The Parrots will take over at their 25. Again, senior night. If you were here early, we had senior night activities. That included uh, the Pantera dancers, the band, Pep Boys, Pep Boys, everyone, training staff, football players, <laughs> everybody got a little TV time. Snap back, throw left side is caught for just short of a first down, or they'll give it to him. Don't yep. think that he should have it. He landed before there, but they will give him a first down. That was caught by. Okay, I'm going to say this name one time, and then we're just going to call him NG. Netneil Gihibri Liabamos. Congratulations. Was that close enough, uh, government yeah. work? You're it, a lawyer. It matches the spelling, and I'm not calling you names. So All right, <laughs> fair enough. Branch is pretty easy. <laughs> but then again, so is Harrison Ducro. Yeah, I like it, yeah. Although I think when I first met you, I was saying Ducross, and you corrected me. There's a nice tackle by Rapolo, pulling down the quarterback, Terrell Jones. Yeah, smart discipline rush by the Colleyville Heritage uh, defensive four, which allowed us to make the tackle um, after, after a two-yard game. I like this quarterback. He is decisive. He can get rid of the football. He throws it on the, 
on a rope. Um, and he can run if he gets outside. And we've seen he can be dangerous if he gets outside the edges and just throws it up to. He's got a couple tall, lanky, wide receivers, so why not just take a shot? Five receivers to fill the pattern. Looking right, he'll run this time. Going to get a first down across the 45 to the 50 and pushed out around the 46-yard line. That was Ty Golden. But, yeah, they, there have been really two players that have been stars so far for the Parrots. Shepard and the quarterback Jones. Yeah, it, it's it's time to spy the quarterback with one of the linebackers. Um, you can still go get the go rush the quarterback with four or five guys, but if he gets out, he's really dangerous. He's he's a good athlete, and they're moving the moving the ball down the field in chunks, Doug. And I don't think Heritage expected this. Well, they haven't shown that as far as I know. They ha it has not been indicative of the scores that they've had this year. Let's put it that way. Wants to throw again, thinks twice about it, and then this sh th that should be, well, I guess he was outside the tackles, but that's going to nobody. Yeah, he was outside the tackle box, and it went past the line of scrimmage. But there is your adjustment. The defensive end did not um, rush upfield uh, with hellfire. He came up on the left side and stayed where he was supposed to be, so the quarterback couldn't run, get outside. He had to get rid of the football. Um, and Jaden Hall had blanket coverage, just like he had the time before, but... Number two wasn't given the opportunity to, to box him out like a basketball player was. So a really good um, change in strategy on the Heritage side. Last time two was in the slot. They threw a slant route to him for a touchdown. Let's see if that happens again. Snap back looking left. Nobody. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. Hevison, if he was looking at the quarterback, which he wasn't, which is okay because he was following his man, but that ball whizzed right past his ear. He would have had a six, a pickoff and a pick six. That is correct. Also, um, you called it before the snap. Number two was running that post route, and, and he was open as well. So it brings up a third down and ten for the Parrots. Six minutes to play in the first quarter on the incomplete pass. The clock will stop. Tied at seven. Of course, Thursday night football next week is also a Thursday night game from Herman E. Clark Stadium in Fort Worth. Trey Francis, Gary Harrison Ducrow, and I will Reed be there for that? I don't know if Reed will. I won't. I'll be out of town. Oh, well then, oh. We got penalty flags. We got if they stop the play, it's got to be motion. It, it's got to be on the offense. Correct. Could, yeah. Could be legal motion. It could be false start. False start. Legal procedure. Yep. All of the above. So Trey, I think actually Trey may be bringing one of his uh, broadcast buddies from North Texas. Okay. But he's got lots of new toys that I'm going to have to train him on real fast. Correct? Okay. Or he hooks it up, gets linked in, and then I come in and control the computer and set it up for him from San Francisco. I'm sure the words you're saying make sense. Third and long. Gary doesn't nice, care. Nice. Colleyville's nice. there. This is That's got to be grounding, intentional grounding. I don't know how it can't be. He's definitely within the pocket, and the ball never got across the line of scrimmage. That You are correct, although they're not going to throw the flag. But change in the strategy from Heritage. They blitzed up the middle, and the two defensive ends stayed home. You saw he tried to get outside. He had nowhere to go, so he had to get rid of the football. Nice adjustment. Adjustment. On to punt is Hector Marinez for the Poly Parrots, the Polytech High School Parrots. I thought it was two words before, and then I went on and looked. It's all one word, Polytech. Okay. Polytech, snap is high. They're going to get to this one. Oh, goodness. Oh, it was tipped. It, it was, yes. Tipped, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 40. Nope, it backs up. 41-yard line is where it's down. Colleyville will take over. Back with more Panther football after this quick timeout. Deb Young's secret to success is simple, but it works. Every client is treated as if they're the only client, guided from beginning to end to ensure a smooth transaction. Reach out to her team and see for yourself. You've there got you a go. friend in Weikert Realtors, Bev Young. Colleyville to the line of scrimmage. Luke Ulrich, the Jedi at quarterback, wants to throw. Looking down the slot, got a man caught across the 40. And now shoved backwards, that's Hayden Golden. But he picks up yardage all the way to the 38 on the other side of the football, so I'm going to call that 
a 20-yard gain. And a Collarville Heritage. First down. Nice route out did of the see slot. See how I said that? You did. You Lots did. of voice there. You did. Nice, nice route out of the slot um, by Hayden Golden. Nice, nice pass. Nice firm. Ulrich rolling to his right, hits Golden one more time, catches it, and he will get 17 yards on the carry down to or on the pitch and catch down to the 21. Colleyville moving the ball at will, and another Colleyville Heritage first down. Yeah, you remember old Red Cashin? I do. The NFL. Yes. That's a first down. Everybody's like, he was from College Station. I do recall. Red Cashin made the NFL fun. Snap back, handoff coming this way is Kelleher. He kind of did a little dance there, and now he's going to be pulled down. Might have got a yard. I'd love to see him just put the shoulder down and run people over. He used to do that. Yeah, that was an inside give, and it looks like three of our offensive linemen meshed to the right, but the two linebackers came to the left, and <laughs> they were unblocked. I, I suspect that was a miscommunication somewhere. Kelleher will set up to the right of Ulrich. Motion coming to the near side is Graves. He's running the wheel. There's the pass to him. He's got it. Puts his head down. He's trying to push himself forward, and he steps out around the six. Oh, my gosh. Look where they're giving him. They gave him to the four. All right. We'll take it. We'll take that. Luke Graves down to the four-yard line. Colleyville first and goal now from the four. They are tied at seven. Colleyville looking to take their first lead. Here's that play. That setup again right up the middle. But Colleyville will throw into the corner, blew it, got it, touchdown. <laughs> he feels a lot better now. Yeah, the other one would have been a touchdown too. It, it would have been. This time it's a four-yard lob and catch from Luke Ulrich to Brayden Blewett, and Colleyville puts another six on the board and takes their first lead of the night. The offensive coordinator is having a really good night. As you said, they went to the same setup by which they almost ran the Philadelphia Eagles play. But we had man-to-man -man on Blewett. And Blewett's 6'1", 184, and runs a 4'5". Um, he's on the 4 by one the Blewett. 100, the 200. It's just not fair. Blewett scores it. Burgess snaps it. Graves holds it. And Zucker kicks it. We'll take a look at the replay right here. And I love being able to see this. I mean, it's just absolutely put it where nobody but Braden Blewett could catch it, and he got three feet down. I'd like to let him see. See, that's one of those things. If we get a chance to go in and talk to the kids, yes. let that replay run out a little bit and then try and find a hero shot. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. You know, anyway, that, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Blewett just, he just out-talented the corner. The corner did everything right. It's not like he was looking at the quarterback and got beat. His eyes were on Blewett, and it was on his numbers. Blewett's just quicker, and... That's going to be the case for quite some time. Here's a replay here. See, he was there. One more time. See if they heard me. Maybe they're listening. Let it run out. Let it run out. And then give us a hero shot. Let it zoom all the way in. They're, they must be listening right. to us in there. I don't know. Maybe they are. I love it. Because that's how you do it right there. You, what you'd love to have, if they are listening, and I'll go ahead and say it, you'd love to have that field shot down there. Mm-hmm. Even, and I hope that they're they're on a wireless camera, get them down there on the goal line, and then you take a, a quick hero shot, you switch to that in your replay. Well, and I'm hoping we have a bunch of opportunity to get some experience doing that tonight. We, we should put up a bunch of points. And shout out again to GCA, GCISD for allowing both Grapevine um, and Colleville Heritage students to get really good experience in media and media relations. Dressel drills this one one more time into the end zone. Well, he's Strong. feeling it tonight. Yeah, he's he's there's well there's essentially no wind. Well, no, there is a little wind behind him. I guess now as I look out to the flagpole on the northwest side of the stadium, and we're expecting uh, obviously foul weather tomorrow, uh, thunderstorms to come in and it to be very rainy. But did you check what the temperatures are going to be next week? Yeah, it's going to be really low early. Like in the week. like thirties and then high of fifty. Yeah. Goodness gracious, does it change fast. Because right now it's pretty hot. It's warm and humid outside. So it looks like a new quarterback. Looks like number 14. 14 is... I don't see 14. We don't have a 14. Um, Let's make sure that that's not 8. No, it's 8. Yeah. He's trying to run. Gets away from two Colleyville Heritage Panthers. He'll spin and will not pick up a first down. But he's having to do it. Oh, how can this guy give? No way. There's no way that was a first down. Very nice play by the quarterback. 
Ter- Terrell Jones, we'll just call it. Terrell. Am I being too much of a homer? No, I think you're good. Very nice play. Heritage was where they were supposed to be. There was a spy on the middle. He just beat him. And sometimes, you know, folks are just physically better than the other player. Well, Colleyville's just got to stop them three plays, and then they get the football back and take it and score again. Key is stop them three plays. They have a first down now at the 35. Jones, empty backfield, takes a snap, looks left quickly, throws left quickly. Caught by Shepard at the 39. Shepard is going to get a – oh, that did he just a throw a punch? He did. He threw an elbow. Gets run out of bound by Brandon Bur- or Bryson Burgess. Excuse me, I called him Brandon. Bryson Burgess, after an eight-yard gain, will be second and two. Well, two things. One, that absolutely should have been um, unnecessary roughness by number two. He threw an elbow um, at the face mask of, of Burgess. And the other thing is we mentioned they were throwing the ball up and allowing him to go up as a basketball player. Well, I looked it up very quickly. He is an all-district basketball player for them. Wow. The godfather chimes in with some great information. By the way, we don't control these commercials. But they, the Baylor Scott and White is a sponsor. Sewell, no, well, Sewell's not. Schroeder Orthodontics is not. All right, so that being the case, let's go to our sponsors. Are you serious about your golf game? We are. From playing on tour to more than 25 years of teaching experience, the staff at McMillan Golf oh, understands there is not one way to swing a golf club. Using video analysts, teaching aids, and drills, the staff will customize your learning experience to fit your level of play. Individual group and playing lessons are available. Come now to the McMillan Golf Academy. All right, Polytech, back to the line of scrimmage. Five receivers to fill the pattern for Jones from the shotgun light left hash mark. He'll step under center. He may take this himself. He does. Mm-hmm. And he picks up the first down that time. Can't argue with that. Jones is able to push it out across the 45 for a first down. They've been methodical. Colleyville has stopped them once, and that got Colleyville the lead as they were able to take it back down the field. Well, your friend C.J. Wilson is doing a really good job on offense. He's putting stress on the Colleyville defense. They've got five offensive linemen versus four defensive linemen and one linebacker. Um, and then you've got to go get this quarterback who's really fast, and they're spread out. And if they get, he gets by him, he's a handful. Now, this time he gets pressured, and there's Stephen Cole. I'm not sure who got the pressure, though. Somebody was in there early. I think it was Rapolo in there early. And then he flushed him into Cole's arms, and Cole gets credit for the sack, second down and 12. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that uh, Rapolo just beat his person that time, if you will. I think it was a double team. Um, but, again, now you got to line up, and there's stress on the defense because they've got five offensive linemen versus four defensive linemen and one linebacker um, in the box. And so if the guy gets past those, he, he's, you know, he's going to go for a run. Second and 12 behind the sticks this time for the Parrots. Drop back to throw. Fake. He's going to run. Got all, yeah, he's got all day to run. And he slides down for first down yardage. And that time there was a stunt, and the inside tackle didn't get outside to keep contained. I suspect Heritage is going to keep that stunt in the bag next time. We'll work on that in practice. Yeah, it didn't. You know, here's the deal. you got to have somebody spy this kid. And, and Colleyville is, uh, I don't want to say struggling to cover who they're sending out because they're not, but they're definitely, they're not giving up the over-the-top pass, but they are giving up the 10, 5-yard out. And if you're far enough back, you catch a 5-yard out, it becomes a 10-yard because the guy turns the ball upfield. Yeah, and they're overloaded to the right side now. They've got three tackles over here to the right. Let's see if it's coming this way. They're running. Oh, yeah. Colleyville defense, here's the scrum. Continuing to be pushed the wrong direction for Colleyville and now pulled down at the 38 yard line. And I believe that's the first actual running back run. I think you are correct. That was though. number three, Saeed Wasadi. Not yeah. Wasabi, but Wasadi. Yeah, uh, that was a, a nice adjustment um, by CJ Wilson. 
they put three extra um, offensive linemen on the right side, and I don't think Heritage noticed it, and so they were simply outnumbered, and that's why he picked up a, a good game. Second down and two after the eight-yard gain for Wasati. He stands to the right. They're going to hand it off to him again up the middle, and this time, oh, no. Colleyville says no, and the scrum's going the other way. And there's the quarterback, and he, why are they not throwing a flag there? I mean, the whistle clearly blew. He grabs our guy by the back. They're going to just allow that to happen, I suppose. Third down, loss of two. But did you see that? I did. Big time play by Mr. Naida. He beat his man uh, up the middle. Heritage made the adjustment. They put eight guys in the box this time, and Polytech couldn't run the football. So nice adjustment. They're going to let this one run out. We'll take a break also. Colleyville leads it 14 to nothing. Back with quarter number two from Mustang Panther Stadium in a moment. I'm Doug Branch alongside Gary Harrison Ducrow. Back in a moment. Energy, optimum value, serious fitness. Once you walk through the door at EOS, you'll see why EOS Fitness is the better gym at the better price. It's still early in the game. Don't throw a Hail Mary. Get started now. Set up a free informational meeting with Lisa Bain Grossman of The Right Approach as she helps you get to the goalpost with creating a sure win application essay for college. Welcome back to Mustang Panther Stadium. Colleyville. Trying to shut down this poly offense that has been proficient so far tonight. Under former Dallas Cowboy wide receiver C.J. Wilson. Back to throw Jones. Jones is going long. Hayden or Golden is there. Oh, he fell down. Golly. I just, you know, if a guy holds the guy, that's one thing. But the receiver can't just flop. Yeah, I, I don't like the call uh, from the refs. I do like the strategy from C.J. Wilson because you take a deep shot, you throw the ball where your guy can't get it and the defender can't get it, and you potentially get a, get a penalty out of it, and that's what they got. I mean, I can't say that there wasn't contact, but there's no way it was contact that knocked him to the ground like that. I mean, that's just taking a flop. That's, that's worse than the soccer guys. Well, at the high school and college level, it is not a requirement to get your head around like it is in the pros. Um, so Golden did not get his head around, but he also, you know, he did not interfere with the player in, in terms of that person's ability to catch the football. Well, the ball was not catchable. Just, it's just a bad call yeah. all the way around. Parrott's got it first down at the 21. Jones will hand it off inside, and they'll pick up two on the play. That was Saeed Wasadi. Looks like number 44 is in the game for Heritage. Maddox Moreno. Yep. Uh, he was in on the tackle with a bunch of folks. Um, Polly's interesting. Every time they've overloaded to one side, they've run that inside give to that side. Um, so I think that's going to be a key for Heritage to pick up on going forward. The other thing, though, is if he pulls that ball, and Heritage over, overreacts, then eight can run. Hand off right side one more time, and there's a nice tackle coming out of his safety slot. I believe that was... That was Mr. Golden. Hayden Golden again. Big time tackle. Or Ty right? Golden, excuse me. Ty Golden, number four. Yes. And they were overloaded to the right side, and they ran to the right side again. They're so going to run, fake that run, and the quarterback's going to keep it and see if he can beat one person over on the left side. Colleyville's got to stop him here to bring up a fourth down. It's third and a long four. Snap back. Ball gets away. Colleyville's there. This has got to be a grounding. How can that not be grounding? Uh, intentional grounding? Here comes the official in to talk about it. It's got to be a flag. No? Man, I... I 
And that would have been a loss of down. And a 15-yard penalty. This could be the difference in three points. Well, he was in the tackle box. Maybe the ball got past the line of scrimmage. There but was you got to have a – well, There was a receiver over there. All yeah. right. Now, he had to be 84 feet Look tall. at how much farther out he is. Did he get it? He did. He did. Man, that was a long run-up from the kicker, wasn't it? Yeah, I expect but that to be blocked. he made it. 14-10, Colleyville leads it. Back to Mustang Panther Stadium with more Colleyville Heritage Panther football after this message. You have a dream, the dream of having a pool and a backyard oasis. It's time to talk to the professionals at J. Caldwell Custom Pools. From new construction to remodeling, service, and maintenance, J. Caldwell Custom Pools is your custom pool builder and outdoor living design experts. Your dream of having a pool with spas, fountains, and fire features is about to come true. Dive in and find out more at jcaldwellcustompools.com. Proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Classic Chevrolet. Relax, enjoy the difference. We're your neighbor. We're your friend. And when you're at Classic Chevrolet, we consider you part of our family. Enjoy honest, upfront pricing, the largest selection of new Chevrolets in the nation, and fair, competitive payouts on every trade. It's consistently in and out in 30 minutes. Uh, no haggling, no problems. Classic Chevrolet. Relax, enjoy the difference. Alongside Gary Harrison Ducrow, I'm Doug Branch back at Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine. Colleyville leads at 14-10 as the parents from Polytech are giving them everything right now, Gary, they can handle. Yeah, I don't think Heritage expected Polytech to be able to move the ball um, as well as they, they have, but it's good, smart football. Kickoff is going to go into the end zone and out the back. And honestly... I like to have a good competitive football game. I think we all they expect need this that. to be a real big blowout. Yep. But as you get to the playoffs, you will play against some other sophisticated schools that might not be as talented as you are. But if you overload and you're able to pick up seven yards and if you spread out the defense and therefore you get it, you had a really good running quarterback and you get him one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, that's what those teams will do. So I love what I'm seeing so far. Now, I think we need to put some distance between ourselves to get to, to be comfortable. But I like this. Tell you what, one thing that probably has never happened before is Colleyville had a full practice on the morning of a game. Here's a throw out. Sogan's got it, turns the corner, and Sogan has run out of bounds around the 37. And that's 12 yards and a Colleyville Heritage Panther. First down. Hi, right, Gary. I like it. Out to the 32 in one play. Zach Sogan with his second catch on the night. Love that route by Sogan. I think we have a, a mismatch in the slot um, with Hayden Golden on his guy. Here's Sione Valahi for Colleyville, the transfer in from Utah, who goes for a five-yard gain over left guard tackle. Nice run from him, and he's added a little bit to Colleyville's offense since he's uh, now arrived after a couple of games and I think gotten his paws wet. Yeah, he's a, he's a good, scrappy, quick, built. Um, and he's got a lot of energy. He's got a lot of energy. and Ready I, to go. hate to say it, he looks like the guy that wore the 27 before him. Luke wants to throw. Got all day, and I mean all day. Running out to the right, he'll let it go. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. Blew it, just found the football, and that's a touchdown that will go. 40, 58 yards from Luke Ulrich to Braden Blewett, who got behind the defense, and this time, Gary, he does not let it get away. Well, he does what he always does, and that is he will make the catch with his hands. He's got incredible ball skills. That play from the origin was supposed to be a post route. Luke looked there. It wasn't there initially. The offensive line, hats off to them. Nobody got downfield illegally. while, nope, while Nobody held. Out. Oh, it's awesome. Great Great execution. Luke Graves to hold. Zuckert with the extra point. Snap from Burgess, and it is good. Just like that, I believe that was three plays. Colleyville back up by 11. When we return, we will complete quarter number two, 944 to go. Colleyville, 21. Polly, 10 back in a moment. 
Better Faster Urgent Care in South Lake is a proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Better Faster Urgent Care provides immediate care for acute, non-life-threatening illness and injury, all of which is provided by board-certified emergency physician specialists. They provide care for the simplest to the more complex medical conditions and have become prominent figures in our community's health care network. Compass Church is a loyal supporter of Panther football. Multiple locations across Northeast Tarrant County, all navigating people to God, offering online and in-person worship. IFC Roofing is a locally owned general contractor and construction company which manages roofing projects hands-on from start to finish. We can also help you navigate each step of the sometimes complicated insurance claim process. If you suspect your home's been damaged by Mother Nature, give IFC Roofing a call and see why they're the highest rated and reviewed roofing general contractor in DFW. Back at Mustang Panther Stadium alongside Gary Harrison Ducro, I'm Doug Branch, Landon Dressel to kick off. Right foot drives it to the end zone, and luckily for Polytech, it sneaks into the end zone because nobody put out the T sign. That would have been a live football. Yeah, to your point earlier, the, from where we're sitting, the wind is blowing from right to left. And Dressel put two almost out of the end zone from going from right to left. Well, clearly it's blowing um, into those kicks since we changed sides, and that one landed about the five. Um, they were a little bit nonchalant about that when they were running off, and that ball wasn't quite in the end zone yet. That, as, as you said, that could have turned into a disaster for them. So the Parrots back on the field, led by their quarterback, Terrell Jones. Anthony Shepard has been their top target. Number two, he's drawn a couple penalties and scored a long touchdown. Snap back, pressure coming. Up the middle, he's going to run now because everybody went right by him. Madden Williams is trying to get there, and Williams pulls him down, but it may not be enough to stop him. Uh, it's short of a first down. He does stop him at the 34-yard line. It'll be second and one. So Polytech went five wides. Heritage went five wides with them with the safety, which meant you had four defensive linemen and one linebacker. Heritage ran a stunt. Um, left side didn't stay home, and quarterback took off. They've been doing that all the first half. Joe Rapolo subs in as defensive end on the right side, number 31. Second and one from the shotgun is Jones. Snap back, looking left, looking right over the middle. Got a man, and it's right through Shepard's hands, and Shepard bangs the turf. As I think he was expecting to get hit, Gary, right there, and kind of got crocodile arm. I think that's about right. <laughs> Safety was, was bearing down on him, and as I said, he's an all-district basketball player. I'm not sure you find a helmet in your numbers at, when you're playing basketball. Yeah, but that route was there. It was available. Colleyville does press this time. Everybody within seven yards of the line of scrimmage. Snap back. Jones, quick pass over the middle. This is caught for a first down and more. There's going to be some heavy contact out there with the receiver Shepard doing what he's doing right now. I know you're fighting to get rid of people, but when you grab people and throw them headfirst into the ground, somebody's going to come and get you. Yeah, I'm not sure it's going to get to that because I think Heritage has seen what he's doing, and I think magically there's going to be, as Reed would say, a lot of flowing to the football when he has it. Yeah, so I think, I think that's funny, as Reed would say. <laughs> I think there'll be an attitude adjustment here pretty soon. Yeah, you, I'm, I, if I'm playing linebacker and you treat one of my DBs like that, come across the middle one more time, you're going to get blown up, whether you get the ball or not. Inside handoff, Colleyville's there, and they'll gain three on the play out to the 46. Nice Wasadi fill. on the carry, sorry. Yeah, yeah you're, you're good. Nice fill by um, Heritage linebacker Mr. Williams there. Really nice um, discipline and a nice quick fill up to the line. Colleyville leads at 21-10, just under eight minutes to play here in the half. Who's in at left defensive end for us, Doug. I can't see the number. Uh, let me check. Is it 31? 12 is left. That's Hebison. And Stephen Cole decides to 
not allow more than a yard gain right there as he pulls down Wasabi one more time. They gave him the football, and that's going nowhere. Yeah, very nice field again. That's actually 31. Joe Rapolo is in that left defense. He's now. right. Well, he just moved to the right. Oh, okay. Yeah. He swapped with his brother. Yeah, they're they're on the they're, well, they're they're what bookending the line of scrimmage with Naida and Stephen Cole in the middle. Yes. So third the big and, fella. Third and seven. So what they've done is they've gone to Mr. Shepard um, out of the slot because the guy lined up on him is eight yards off, and that's what they've done to this point. Snap back. Jones wants to throw, tipped at the line of scrimmage, caught. That's going to be enough, although the official would have absolutely no idea where he got to because he was six yards behind the play. But they're going to mark it at the 46-yard line, and that will be a poly first down. Yeah, that's what they're doing um, every time they're in a, a third and me medium or third and long. They're going to the slot receiver because the, the safety covering that receiver is eight yards off. So this is sort of, Gary, what happened last week at Northside. Northside did this in the first quarter, and then Colleyville came out and shut it down in the second quarter. I'm surprised it's still happening as we are more than halfway or just about halfway through quarter number two. Run up the middle, and that goes nowhere. And I'm going to say that was Naida that came across the face of the block. Oh, no, it was Stephen Cole. It was Stephen Naida's Cole. Naida's on the other side. So they're they're moving. Stephen Cole, you're, you're exactly right. Great play by Stephen Cole. And, and you're also right. It's getting pretty chippy out there. Number 22 just threw an elbow at somebody's um, uh, heritage player's face mask. That is going to have to be called pretty soon. Otherwise, it's going to get out of control. Well, we know that the Colleyville kids, doesn't matter that they, they, they come from a, a, a what's considered a high-end school. They're going to answer. Yeah. Well, we don't need anybody to get kicked out. I know, I know. I got you. But, but they're like you said, they're going to flow to the football. Jones wants to throw, looking left. He's going to get hit. Ball's out. Ball is on the turf. Joe Rapolo. And recovered by the running back. Was, oh, no, it's not the running back. It was 77, Mayburn Sal, Sal, uh, Salas. Boy, say that frontward and backward. It's the same, S-A-L-A-S. <laughs> mm -hmm. Excellent play by Joe Rapolo. He beat his person. He beat his guy, um, got in, and didn't lose contain on the quarterback and was able to strip the ball, too. I'll say this much. Colleyville's front four big and fit. And, the, and, the, and deep. The fellas are, and deep. The fellas on the other side are big but not necessarily fit. Still working hard. Not saying they're not, but there's a difference in body type between our front line and the offensive line. Jones looking. Uh, whistles are blown, so somebody moved or somebody called timeout. the timeout, yeah. and it was C.J. Wilson. We'll take it with them. Colleyville up 21-10, third down and 22 when we come back. Got a little story for you But where I get my comfort food When I'm feeling down in blue I drive down South White Chapel To the feed store Barbecue Specializing in insurance for self-employed, small businesses, contractors, families, and individuals. Tailor-made PPO health insurance. Reach out for alternative solutions this open enrollment. The team at Unified Health Advisors is ready to score a touchdown for you. Back alongside Gary Harrison Ducrow, I'm Doug Branch from Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine. It is hard to play every game in Grapevine and not play any in Colleyville. What are you looking at there, Godfather? It's, it's third and 22. They had a late sub come off the field. Absolutely it is. A little trickeration, and they finally blow a whistle as somebody moved, and it looks like it was number nine, Jaden Johnson. And that's an interesting way. That's J-A-I-D-U-N. Jaden? I, Jay Dunn? I, I think as a football fan, that's got to be extremely frustrating. They just called the timeout to get themselves together. Then they come out, they have an illegal substitution, and they jump off sides. So I think they're starting to lose a little bit of their focus um, as they get further you know, behind on the score. Well, 
Colleyville, with one more score, can afford to kind of go toe-to-toe with them, score for score. You get ahead by 17 points, 18 points. Let's just not get a, a pass interference on a chunk pass, you know, hoping to just out-jump somebody. Yeah, stacked penalty. receivers to either side. Pressure coming up the middle. There's a hold. Good. And this has got to be a ground. There's that's, nobody over there. That's got to be intentional grounding. That's absolutely grounding. He was out of the – and it never got to the line of scrimmage. It never got to the line of scrimmage. He was under pressure. There was no receiver there, and it didn't get past the line of scrimmage. That absolutely has to be grounded. And I think you wave off the holding penalty and make it fourth down and whatever it is, 27? Well, the thing is, if it's grounding, that's the penalty and loss of downs. Right. So this is literally costing Heritage 20 yards. Well, they are going to punt for the first time. Or did they punt already? No, they did not punt. Yeah, they, they did. We blocked it. Remember? Oh, it got tipped. Mm -hmm. You're right. I was going to say, we haven't had a run back. Bryson Burgess is deep at the 30-yard line. Colleyville territory. Actually, he's up around the 32. Tough snap. Oh, almost got it again. Fielded by Burgess. Burgess is going to get... Pulled down as he did not get a whole lot of help with blocking. But Colleyville will have the vault football. Good position at the 37-yard line. Back in a moment. I've got one. Would you rather eat at Costa Vida and not be allowed to talk? Or you can talk, but you're not allowed to eat your sweet pork burrito. Oh, really funny, guys. Costa Vida means a fresh take on classic Mexican, like hand-rolled tortillas, sweet pork burritos, and honey habanero salsa made from scratch. I'm going to go order sweet cinnamon tortilla. Want one? Redefine your favorite Mexican food. Escape to Costa Vida today. Here is a run up the middle, and Ryan Kelleher, in one play, takes it to the house. 63 yards, and I do not believe I have seen Ryan Kelleher accelerate like he just did. He came out of the center like a cannon shot out. Yeah, the difference between Ryan last year and this year um, is amazing. He, he worked really, really hard. I've been looking for an explosion play like this from him you know, for, for quite some time this season, and there it was. Zuckert with the extra point, Graves to hold, snap from Burgess. Kick is up, and it is good. So Colleyville in one play goes 60, was it 63 yards, I said? Is it the 47? 63 yards, and actually it was at the 42, so 68 yards. And they lead it now 28 to 10. And, Gary, that's exactly the answer you want to see when they finally get a stop. And the stop really came from that initial sack and then the, the football getting stripped by Rapolo. Yeah, it did. That was a big play. That was a big loss. Um, and I think what's happening now is Polytech had a lot of positive momentum from their win last week. And they, they looked good early. Um, but as you get a stop and you can't um, you know, stop Heritage from scoring, you kind of lose your focus. Um, also, Heritage, that, that touchdown was out of the spread. And so I know there was some extra uh, attention paid to Golden in the slot and blew it out, out on the edge. And it was Kelleher one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and he won. All right, Colleyville to kick off. I believe Dressel is back in there to do that for the Panthers. Right foot, Landon Dressel. This one's going to be popped up into the air. Comes down at the 10, and something flew out of the... <laughs> Looked like it knocked his mouthpiece out. Yeah, or something, or knocked an earpiece out. Ball brought up by, is that 28 or 25? 28. James Queen. I think you mentioned his name before. He's the defensive back on Blewett who got torched a minute ago. But yeah, whatever he lost, it was recovered and returned. Well, the, these high school football games provide opportunities all kinds of ways. And, you know, if coming into the season, 
um, James Queen. You know, all you can ask for is to try to get some film against a really good wide receiver, and either you take advantage of it or or you don't. But the good thing about it is you got that chance, and for that, you know, I love high school football. Coming up at halftime, Colleyville Heritage Marching Band, Colleyville Heritage High School Panther Marching Band. And you know what's kind of neat, Gary? If you look over there, they're not in their uniforms. Here's a run coming to the near side, and Gary and Lloyd, along with Ty Golden, are there to make the stop, a gain of a yard for the running back, Saeed, Saeed, uh, Saeed, 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 Saeed excuse me, was Saeed. Yeah, you're, you're right. It was a really good play by Lloyd and Rapolo. Um, also, I love the foot speed on, on Maddox Moreno. He got out there in a hurry from the defensive line position. Hey, you know what I just realized? His name is Saeed Wasaidi. It's the same, just a W on the last, W-A. Okay. Okay. Well, I, just, I figure stuff out sometimes. Fake, rolling out right, wants to throw, launches it up in the air. And they're going to throw a flag, see? I mean, every throw is a flag, and it's ridiculous. The guy's running out of bounds. It's only a 15-yard penalty, but it's just ridiculous. Well, it's you know, it's that it's in that crosshair, right? As as I mentioned before, in high school and in college, there's no rule about you need to get your head around for it not to be interference. That was absolute perfect coverage um, by Jaden Hall. Yeah, you know, he he was preventing the guy from catching the football, and that's what you're supposed to do as a corner. But some referees get that confused with, well, you have to get your head around. You don't have to get your head around. Well, and I'd be really interested to see if the original contact was by Jaden Hall or whether the receiver reached out and then they started hand fighting. I mean, they're not going to beat us over the top. They're just going to get 15-yard penalties like this, and the defense has to shut them down up front. Well, I suspect the coaches will talk to Jaden at halftime. I suspect he's getting frustrated because he's legitimately shutting that guy down. Right. That's they're, what he's they're, doing. He's not open. And they're, and they're penalizing him, and that's just not right. Looks like they're going to run this time. Hand off right side. Uh, cuts it inside. And what I was about to say, nowhere to go. But the only reason he had that big a hole, Gary? Well, there was two holdings on that play. 55 was holding Lloyd. Um, and then an interior uh, lineman was holding uh, 15 as well. So that will back him up behind the change. Make it first down and 20 for the Parrots. Who have had just about all the sunflower seeds they're going to get tonight. Um, you're getting some positive reinforcement, Doug, from folks watching our feeds. Uh, one of them is the picture is really good, and the other one is the YouTube broadcast is really good, too. And that's good to hear because Lord knows we get enough complaints, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we sure try hard, but I, I, I bought some new equipment to try and enhance what we're going to do for the playoffs. Ah, and funny. now we theoretically have enough to do two different cameras if we go somewhere. We could actually have a high and wide, high camera that's wide and a tight camera to follow action. Quarterback wants to throw, and he will be pulled down and sacked. And then what happened right there? So Evan at Naida. The, at the end of that. Well, no, Evan, no, no. Go ahead. Evan Naida got the original um, uh, penetration, and then instead of taking the quarterback down, he tried to rip that ball out, and I think it came out as he was hitting. Oh, the ground. and they were diving to see it. Our okay. guy, our guy, got the ball, and there it was already lineman. down, yeah. though. Yes. So it's more than twenty yards now. That's a he very it's about heady. second and twenty-six. It's a very heady play by Mister Naida. Behind the chains again, Polly and Colleyville's front line is starting to impose its will which is what they need because the throws over the top are getting penalized every time. Quarterback wants to run, got nowhere to go. He's going to throw this one away. See? Nobody even close. And he heaves it up. He's been coached well. Throw the ball out of bounds because you're not going to get a penalty call. So, so that one got past the line of scrimmage, but there was no receiver in the area. The receiver had cleared out. I'm surprised Coach Edwards isn't losing his stuff. Well... Big, uh, 28 10 but well, it, it's not like it's a it's a lack of a penalty that doesn't exist impact the game right like, absolutely that's a, that's a 15 yard penalty because it's and a loss of down, down right yes and all they need 
theoretically, is to send somebody on a go route and pick up their, their you know, automatic first down on a fake it, it pass interference. Well, it's, it's worked for him so far. Snap back, quarterback. Jones wants to throw. Pressure up the middle. He will not get out. Nice. Very nice. Gain of two will bring up a third down and about 26. Well, that was third down. Oh, fourth and 26. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I didn't see the clock or the uh, the down marker change. But you're you're right. That they had three receivers to the right and everybody ran a go route. So that play was designed. They were going to chunk it and see what happens. See what see if they can get the penalty. But the best way to negate that get to the quarterback. And that's what happened for Colleyville. Clock continues to run, 2-12. Colleyville's going to get a chance to put one more score on the board. And they've almost blocked the punt twice. They'll get this one. That, yep, right up the middle. This could be returned. Oh, pick it up and return it. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm just going to say smart play, get on the right. football. Yes. But Rapolo could have picked that one up and walked in for six. Very, very smart play by Mr. Rapolo because if he touches it while I was watching the game, um, I forget. Oh, it was the Saints. Oh, it, whoa. Linebacker picked the ball, got got the um, – Stripped? Yes. Yes. And I'm yelling at the TV as he's running back, get down, get down, get down. So, very smart play. Colleyville's got the football, 156 to go at the 21-yard line. Ulrich rolling to his left. He'll throw it kind of crazily. Caught out there. I don't know who that is, but he's going to take it to the house. Hold it. And one more play, Colleyville scores. So that was five? Yes. Hayden Golden. Nice job to catch it basically off of his shoe tops as Luke kind of threw that while he was running, trying to turn the right, the shoulder back and let go of it across his body, and he got it out there. Golden catches it and goes six yards in with it. Colleyville scores from 21 yards out. Extra point from Ryan Zuckert is good. Colleyville now leads at 35 to 10. We're under two minutes to play in the half. A reminder at halftime, it's the Colleyville Heritage Panther Marching Band and the pride of Polytech High School. The Polytech Parrot Marching Band will have both of those bands in their entirety. We get a chance to look at the replay here. He kind of, see, he's moving his feet. Mm -hmm. It was a low throw, but picked off the ground basically at the 10. And then, what do they say, yards after reception? 10 yeah. yards and a touchdown. A nice job there on the replay for Hayden Golden. As I mentioned before, over the last three years, Heritage suffered with, with interceptions, right? And, and Luke is a true dual threat quarterback. He does not set in the pocket and plant his feet all the time. When he does it, the balls are on a rope. Uh, but you don't want to take that creativity away from him. I think the, the thing that's impressed me the most this year is that he can make throws like that, and he has made throws like that, without putting the ball at risk of being picked off. That is huge for this football team. So with a minute and 55 seconds to play, Colleyville will kick off to the Parrots, who, you know, it's, oh, now they're going back deeper. I thought that they were going to sit at the 20-yard line, and they still don't. Respect the leg of Landon Dressel as they stand at the 10, although he is kicking into a, a pretty decent win. Well, uh, Zuckert's going to kick this Oh, one. Ryan Zuckert. This should probably can go high. Oh, it's an onside kick. I was going to say. Colleyville's. Oh, something. they got it. They got it. They got it. The defensive All or right. the uh, receiver, 52, is uh, Lamarian Burton tried to come up and make the play. He wasn't able to do it. And. That was the old, uh, what's his name, uh, Pat, uh, the, uh, broadcaster for ESPN who used to kick for the Colts. Where's, where's the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, I can't say what the shirt is. It's, it's a tank top. What's his name? It'll, it'll come to Pat Mac McAfee. Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee. He did the same thing. He kicked the ball and recovered it himself. Zuckert actually ran past it, allowing them well, to get it. So Very smart because Zuckert got there before 10 yards, and so it was very smart for him to not, not touch, touch that it. football. Yep. Colleyville gets it back at the 49-yard line. Offside, free play for Colleyville. Take it. Take there it. goes Zach Sogan. He's open. Caught it. Turns. Keeps his feet. Touchdown, Colleyville. And the officials already picking it up. Offside. They're going to wave that off. So Sogan 
from 51 yards away. Comes up with the pitch and catch from the Jedi who threw that one out there like it was on a, a, a what, what were those, a speeder bike. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much in the smart football. They, they jumped off sides. It's your play. Take a deep shot. Don't throw that ball into the flat. Um, love that. Love everything about the play. Colleyville scores in 12 seconds. And Sogan came into the game averaging about 15 yards a catch. I think that catch will help that. That'll, I'm not great in math. Yeah. But You're not? No, I think that will help it. No wonder my retainer fee was so cheap. <laughs> Zucker with the right foot, and Colleyville now leads it 32 to 10. Boy, I tell you, I'm sorry. Go no, no, no. I was going to say that amounts to uh, basically 30-something plus. It was 14 to 10. So how many points is that? 14 to get to 42. That's 30, 30 something points. 20, 28. 28, 28 point. Yeah. Run unanswered by Colleyville, and they did it right there with the onside kick to surprise the Parrots. And then the replay, which we'll take a look at it right here. He high points the ball, and luckily, Sogan able to just over the yep. tips of the defender's fingers, and then he keeps his balance. Nobody within 15 yards. And he walks it into the end zone for a touchdown. Outstanding balance. That's an Alvin Kamara type of play. What I was going to say is Ryan Zucker, man, he just got some great film. He and both of the Holden brothers and another player, I'll have to um, figure that out here pretty soon. They're going to Rice tomorrow uh, for the Rice versus Tulane game. Wait, it's tomorrow or it's on Saturday? Saturday, sorry. Okay. sorry. I know you're, you're, you're hey, yes. we're a day ahead. I'm thinking we're at Friday. Now, but if it's tomorrow, I hope they take rain gear. Now, I'll be pulling for Tulane, but, but, but I digress. But Ryan Zucker, again, made a very smart play to not touch that ball because it would have been an illegal touching. And then he was really pumped up. That field goal, I mean, I'm Extra sorry. Extra point. It, it went all the way to the, to the track. There so you he, go. So he is seriously pumped. So Landon Dressel now to kick off for Colleyville. 143 to play. And he will drive this one, and this one is going to come down at the five, and it stops. they yep. got to field it. Going right. That's Queen. Queen breaks oh. the tackle. He's got the edge. He will not score. Colleyville will get him down. Nice job and a nice angle there by Bryce Abram. But, boy, he's got some speed. Queen showed some speed right there as uh, he, he turned it on the outside and put – the Parrots in a good position here with a 129 to play. You know, they're, they're small wins even in a, in a defeat. So he's out here. He's got a really good game against Blewett, you know, one-to-one. -one. He's not done very well. But when you see a, a person like that, a player like that, he looks like he's about six foot or so, exhibit that type of speed. Well, if I'm looking for a guy, that's the person I might take a shot on. So lesson to all, of, all the young players as you're coming up and, and watching football and playing football, now, go out there and take advantage of every opportunity given to you because it really could be just one play on film that drives you to get a free college education. Colleyville needs to get somebody out here to help on this side. Jones wants to throw, flushed out the other side. He's going to have to run because he's got no receiver and a nice job coming off of coverage by Darian Lloyd to stop him. And he loses two yards on the sack. Clock, clock continues to run at 113. That's a, yeah, you're right. It was a really good tackle by Darian Lloyd, but it was very dangerous, too. You're right. He came off of coverage, and his guy, that running back, was wide open. Five receivers will fill the pattern. Motion coming this way. Colleyville's there. Football was out. Did he strip it? Okay, so. Rapolo, he well, he went up in the air like Superman, didn't he? Like he was shot up in the air, and, and, and Jones was like, I don't know where to throw it. Uh, our, our defensive line now has a lot of confidence. I'm not going to say they've lost respect, but they also know it's only 38 seconds left in the half. They're, they can't be blocked by um, the Polytech offensive lineman. What's the rapper that made the song that hits Superman? Oh, Superman. Uh, I don't know. Oh. You're asking me? Oh. Doug, you're a renaissance man. Superman. Yeah. We'll find that out at the break. Okay. Maybe we'll even get the song and play it for everybody in between bands. Snap back. Jones wants to throw. He heaves it up right-hand side. Got That's a man picked. Pick. Oh, he was there. No flag. Burgess was there. Well, that time he threw it in the field of play, and the receiver had to try and come back to the football. But that brings up a fourth down and long. Only four seconds left. Did they just run backwards and then take a knee? 
Well, if they try, to I can't believe they're going to punt the football. If, right. If Come on, C.J. Punt, Wilson knows better. If they try to punt, it will be blocked. And if it's not blocked, our guys can take it back for a touchdown. I just run around with it. Oh, and it's Soldier Boy. Soldier Boy. Yeah. Did somebody send that, or you just no, remembered it? No, I just it? remembered it. All right. I do know who that is, though. Okay. Collierville's got three guys 30 yards off the line of scrimmage. This is that prevent defense. They'll throw it out to the right side. Oh, that's on the ground. Clock stops. Yep. Clock stops. It did not stop. Why did they run it four seconds? There's no way that there shouldn't be time left. They need to put three seconds back on the clock. Don't send us to the locker room. There should be three seconds on the clock. Which might allow – oh, we're going into the wind. We got one more play. Well, I was – yeah, I was thinking it might allow – Hey, Coach Edwards is down there. There was three seconds left on the clock. That ball was down on the ground. How are we not? That's our own scorekeeper. That's our own clock guy. He's saying there's no way that was four seconds. No way. I looked up and there was three seconds still on the clock. And you can hear somebody's not up, uh, happy with that either. I mean, I know we're up 42 to 10, but these officials have been terrible. And, and they, they are the ones that should call up and say, please put three seconds back on the clock. And it's going to be a coach, you're up by 32. Why do you want that? Because we could be up by 50. Right. Well, it, you can also give one of our field goal kickers a really good opportunity to get some to try a kick that ball was what about the 30 so you're looking at 37 47 yeah into the wind and, and you yeah. that now that's really good film well we'll take a time out we'll be back with uh, the poly band and the panther marching band that's next on the panther media network you have a dream the dream of having a pool and a backyard oasis it's time to talk to the professionals at Jay Caldwell Custom Pools. From new construction to remodeling, service, and maintenance, Jay Caldwell Custom Pools is your custom pool builder and outdoor living design experts. Your dream of having a pool with spas, fountains, and fire features is about to come true. Dive in and find out more at jcaldwellcustompools.com. Proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Plastic We're your neighbor, we're your friend, and when you're at Classic Chevrolet, we consider you part of our family. Enjoy honest, upfront pricing, the largest selection of new Chevrolets in the nation, and fair, competitive payouts on every trade. It's consistently in and out in 30 minutes, uh, no haggling, no problems. Classic Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the difference. Better Faster Urgent Care in South Lake is a proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Better Faster Urgent Care provides immediate care for acute, non-life-threatening illness and injury, all of which is provided by board-certified emergency physician specialists. They provide care for the simplest to the more complex medical conditions and have become prominent figures in our community's health care network. IFC Roofing is a locally owned general contractor and construction company which manages roofing projects hands-on from start to finish. We can also help you navigate each step of the sometimes complicated insurance claim process. If you suspect your home's been damaged by Mother Nature, give IFC Roofing a call and see why they're the highest rated and reviewed roofing general contractor in DFW. Let's go down to the field. It's the Poly Parrot Dance Team. Thank you. 
Now please enjoy the music of the Mighty Parrot Marching Band.
I got the new band for y'all called or something. All right, do the dance. <laughs> Come on, Gary, I found your song. Some things cannot be unseen. Trust me, you do not want to see me bust the move. <laughs> we found Gary's song. We'll just let it play in the background. A little Superman, Soldier Boy, well, like joining you. us here on the broadcast. You. I'll tell you what, Colleyville looked like Superman there after they... Went down seven to nothing. Yeah, well, they did, and we, we pulled up the Soldier Boy uh, reference because Mr. Rapolo, you know, <laughs> did the Superman going in um, on a uh, on a pass rush. But I mean, we didn't start that way. Uh, Heritage came out um, playing a really good scheme by Polytech, and Polytech moved the ball right down the field early, which you know good teams will do. They obviously planned and schemed, and then Heritage made some really good adjustments which really amounted to still going after that, that talented running quarterback, but keeping contain on the outside. And then once you kept contain from the defensive ends and rush up the middle got to him, um, then on the offensive side of the ball, the offensive line is simply outstanding. Um, they've been dominating the line of scrimmage from play number one, Mr. Ulrich, um, who is going to go to Rice this Saturday, by the way, along with um, Rice and Burgess, both Golden uh, Twins, and Ryan Zucker. Uh, good luck. Hopefully Tulane wins that game, but good luck. Um, they've been invited by Rice. Wait, hopefully Tulane wins that game. Oh, absolutely. Go Green oh, Wave. Oh, I'm sorry. The Tulane Green, Green Wave, Wave yes. graduate is talking. Yeah, that, that would be me, yeah. You know, okay. ranked number 22 in the country, beat USC last year. In the, uh, Tulane. Oh, yeah. The Green Wave. Yeah, in the Cotton Bowl. Why? Man. Okay, so explain something to me, because they yes, played sir. in the Cotton Bowl. Yes, sir. And I worked that game. Yeah. I was Why there. is the Green Wave blue? Well, it's kind of a... Uh, uh, kind of an aqua green it's, it's, blue. It's kind of an aqua green and blue. Yeah, the blue is is relatively new. Um, yeah, actually, it's a response to fans and students thinking it's a, a really cool color. Started to come into play about ten years or so ago, um, and it, and I really like it too. By the way, it used to be just plain green and white. Then it was green, black, and white. Now it's got that pretty blue in it. So, but but I digress. Offensive line is doing extremely well. Our wide receivers are doing what they do. Mr. Blewett is now up to 12 touchdowns on the year after having two um, in the first half. Um, Luke Ulrich, I think, is up to 23 passes uh, for a touchdown, um, having an outstanding year. No interceptions. Nothing came close to an interception. Um, no ball on the ground. Um, Ryan Kelleher showed burst that we haven't seen this year. Um, and then number 27, uh, Siona uh, Valaha. Valehi. Valehi. Uh, looking really good. I'd like to see Mr. Bennett. Um, you know, he's actually leading the team in almost seven yards per carry this year. And we have not seen we him have, run the ball tonight. We have not tonight. seen him, so I don't know if he's injured, although he's been on special teams. I have to point something out. So yes, if you sir. go to the Dallas Morning News website where they keep all the scores and all the information. Yes, sir. Our buddy next door to us, which hopefully he's not listening. He's listening. He's not doing a whole lot of work over there because I'm looking at the scoring summary. Mm -hmm. One play, one yard, seven points for Colleyville. One play, four yards, 14 points for Colleyville. One play, 58 yards, 21 points for Colleyville. One play, 63 yards, 28 <laughs> points for Colleyville. Yeah. One play, 21 yards, 35. One play, 51 yards, 42. Now, there were a lot of one plays, yeah. but it wasn't every scoring drive. It you, was a one play drive. You, you realize I'm a lover, not a fighter, right, Doug? So, I'm not a fighter so either, but it's if like. If a guy comes over here, you know. And where, he's fighting me. He's fighting you. He's, <laughs> I got to go home to Miss Carla, man, with oh no scratches. You goodness. hear me? Let me None. go to the box score. Let's see if we can pull up some information on Colleyville. Colleyville's only had 12 first downs. Tech has had 13. But Colleyville's gone for 318 total yards. Polytech, 166. How many penalty yards on Heritage? 
penalty yards, four for 60. And that was four interference penalties for 60 yards, all, 15 apiece. All for first downs. Terrell Jones is 7 of 17 for 99 yards and a touchdown. Luke Ulrich is 9 of 10 for 214 yards and four touchdowns. Well, that'll help Luke out because coming into the game, he was at 67% completion rate. Ryan Kelleher has run the ball 18 times for 90 yards. 18? Uh, five times. Okay. For 90 yards, 18 in attempt, sorry. Here's the kickoff. It's going to go into the end zone and out of the back of the end zone, and Colleyville will take over at their 25 as we get the third quarter underway alongside Gary Harrison Ducro. I'm Doug Branch. Normally, Gary's son Reed is up here in the booth, but he has work activities tonight. And Trey Francis, a student at, is it North Texas University or the University of North Texas? The Golden Eagles, no, not the Golden Eagles, the Green Eagles. The Green, what are they? UNT. Eagles. The is, is it the Green Eagles? Uh, don't give me the lion. Oh, no, I should know that. Hey, okay. Mean Green. Mean Green. The Mean Green Eagles. Mean All right, green. I just remembered it because Mean Joe Green, who also went to UNT. Yes. By the way, impressed with Polytech kicker number 50, Hector Marinez. Yep. Nice field goal and just put that one through the, end, through the back of the end zone. There's Mr. Bennett. Bennett's got the football. Bennett's across the 35 yards and pulled down at the 30. One yard line, six yard gain, second and four. And that's right at his season average, which is about 6.83 coming into the game. Running hard, too. And he did most of that by himself. Did get a block up front, but four yards was after contact. Did we get Soldier Boy off? There we go. All right. Ulrich still in at quarterback. Second and four, handoff inside Bennett. This time he sneaks his way through a couple of guys. I don't know how he missed that tackle, but he did. And the seven-yard pickup is a Colleyville Heritage Panther. First down. And by the way, your, your guy, Bodie Weaver, is now in at quarterback. Ah, Bodie Weaver. So if, if Luke is the Jedi, then Bodie Weaver has got to be the Padawan learner. You know, he's his, his understudy, right? Isn't what that what the Padawan learner was the understudy to the Jedi? I am in no way familiar with Weaver that. wants to throw, turns his shoulders. Oh, it has his head taken off. Uh, he should have done a better impression of Terrell Jones. Well, he should have done a better impression. <laughs> no, Doug, don't teach him to have penalties. What Terrell no, no, been they, doing. they haven't called a penalty oh, yet. He's yeah, throwing the ball out of bounds. You just throw it to the sideline, no, no, and they won't you, call anything. You'll get penalized for that later in the season. What he should have done is what Luke has been doing, which is you throw that ball uh, towards your receiver and at his feet, um, or you know just just you know drop it down to the short guy. Second and long for Colleyville. Bennett's got it, and he's got some blocks on the outside, and he falls down. And there's a penalty flag coming in late. I think that's going to be holding on number 81. So if that is the case and you have the number correct, 81 is Gianni Presci. As we do have wholesale substitutions, this is the Colleyville second team offense. Incorrect. What was it? Face mask, defense number six, he said. I think he's there incorrect. It was number five. It was in the tussle over here. So a face Still. mask gives Colleyville the automatic first down at the 49-yard line. Weaver will hand it off inside, and that's Vallehi, who pushes forward for eight yards on the carry, second and two coming up. Love the drive by all of the running backs. They, they want to maximize their opportunity to run the ball. Let me go ahead and give out a shout to this outstanding offensive line. Number 58, Jaden Griffith. Um, that is, or is that 56? There, I'll tell you what, I'm going to read them off for you. Okay. We've got 58 at right tackle. That's Jaden Griffin. 78 is Tristan Rodriguez. Yes. Can't see the center yet. 54, Eli Amerson. Yes. Here's a run up the middle. By Vallejo one more time, and he picks up the first down. And then we've got extra curriculum. Here comes Tristan Rodriguez in. OK, 
Okay, and we've got 55. 55 would be. Parker Leatherwood. Parker Leatherwood. A normal up there in 76, I believe, is. Um, Tucker Perriman. Tucky Perriman. So it's basically the offensive line is still most of the starters. Hats off to those guys. But everyone at wide receiver is a backup right now. No, I guess not. Hayden Golden is in. Here's a handoff inside. Bennett's got it. He misses one tackle, and he dives forward for about five yards on the carry. Yeah, you're right. <clears throat> the wide receivers are all the um, number twos except number five, which is Golden. Um, I love the quarterback getting some opportunity with the first string offensive line so he can truly see what the game would look like. We get into the playoffs and you know, maybe move, move Luke around or you know, if, if he needs to take a breather, we've got somebody with some experience. Snap back, Weaver looking right, throws it right, caught. And that's 81, Gianni Presci. Senior. His, his first reception, I believe, on the season. I believe it is. Comes on senior night. Caught the ball in his hands, tucked it, and made a nice move. Loving it. Colleyville's going to have to get their wide receivers to a seamstress because those pants are very short. Snap back. Weaver hands it off inside the lay. He got room. Nice blocking over there on the side. Trying to see who that was Luke Graves. Graves just basically cleared a path for him from his uh, tight end position. And the lay he follows him for the Colleyville Heritage Panther. First down. As a running back, you love to see what just happened. No white jersey put a hand on our running back until he was four yards past the line of scrimmage. Graves will be in a kind of a halfback position behind the tackle. Handoff to Ryan Kelleher. Kelleher pushes forward for another close to five, and now we've got extracurricular activities going on, and the officials throw a flag, and I don't know if this went on Colleyville or it went on Polly, but Polly's going to get smacked if they continue to treat the Colleyville Heritage Panthers like this, both on the scoreboard and Tristan Rodriguez has stepped up for his partners. Well, we noticed some frustration early in the game, you know, when, when Polly figured that it was getting away from them, and that's where we are now. And so now I'm going to look for some leadership from the referees to take control. Well, the, all the Zebras have congregated... So defense number six is called for the unsportsmanlike conduct, and I don't see a six in there, so maybe C.J. Wilson said he's seen enough of that. Yeah, he's he's on the bench over there. Oh, wait. Himself. Colleyville just called for a penalty, too. Results in disqualification. No, no, no. That's the first oh, one. okay. That could result in disqualification. So Graves is up there with the lineman saying, keep your cool. Bodie Weaver makes the call. And clearly, Polly is frustrated. But Colleyville's still running their offense. Weaver wants to throw. We'll throw back to nice. Kelleher. Kelleher Screen. got room, and he'll take it to the house. Touchdown. Ryan Kelleher, nice screenplay. Good touch from Bodie Weaver. Yeah, very nice play call, very nice execution. Um, I don't think anybody laid a hand on him. Uh, I, I will tell you, it does feel like things are getting really chippy, and I get it. You know, you're almost 40 points down. You'll be 39 if this goes through. But the referees need to demonstrate some leadership, and our heritage players need to demonstrate some leadership. We can't lose our, our cool and wind up getting kicked out for our game. Extra point is up, and it is good off the foot of Ryan Zuckert. So 6-17 to play in the third quarter. Colleyville leads it. 49-10, back after these quick messages from those who make this broadcast possible. Bev Young's secret to success is simple, but it works. Every client is treated as if they're the only client, guided from beginning to end to ensure a smooth transaction. Reach out to her team and see for yourself. You've got a friend in Weikert Realtors, Bev Young and Associates. It's still early in the game. Don't throw a Hail Mary. Get started now. Set up a free informational meeting with Lisa Bain Grossman of The Right Approach as she helps you get to the goalpost with creating a sure win application essay for college. Leading every generation to know and follow Jesus.
Back alongside Gary Harris and Ducro, I'm Doug Branch, live from Mustang Panther Stadium in Grapevine, Texas. Colleyville leads at 49 to 10. Ryan Zucker to kick off. Last time he, oh, wait, that was not, yes, it was. It was Ryan Zucker. Last time he onside kicked it and almost got the recovery. Colleyville did. There's a nice play from the normal, or I say one of the guys who normally kicks off. Landon Dressel comes down on the kick coverage team and makes the tackle at the 16-yard line. So just to show you, Gary, he doesn't have a big foot. He's also got a big shoulder. <laughs> and a very sure tackle it was. And you know what they say about people with a big foot? Big socks. I knew you would be quiet on that one. you say something? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Colleyville's defense is on the field. It is still the majority of first-teamers out there. I have to learn how to use that mute button on my own. <laughs> and you did a good job. Miss <laughs> Carla would be proud of you right there. Uh, so 39 points. I'm not sure where the threshold is of yeah. potentially a running clock, although C.J. Wilson may not have agreed to a running clock tonight. You're Even right. though down by 39. Yeah, you're right. The first team defense is still on the field. And we have a timeout or a flag. Flag for um, taking too long. Delay a game will cost them five yards. So now they're putting themselves behind the chains. They're frustrated. Their quarterback has had a really good night. Uh, number eight, Terrell Owens. He's limping just a touch. Um, I I'm looking forward to seeing some twos get Did some. you say Terrell Owens? I did not mean to say that. Jones. Terrell Jones. <laughs> I was thinking the yes. same thing. Yes, he's limping just a touch. He wants to throw here. Right side, got a man caught. Actually, a really nice catch out there and a better tackle. And that was, was that West? No, <laughs> I that, believe it yes. was Hayden West on that, the tackle, number was, seven. That was Hayden West. His name hadn't been called that much because it had been thrown to, really, who's been on number two, which has been Shepherd. Jaden Hall. Correct. Um, but Hayden West, man, that dude is going to be special. Love how he plays a cornerback position. He's only a sophomore. Um, with this year's experience and then training before next season, you, you're going to start to see his name pop up all over the place. Looks like they're rolling the dice here. I saw the call from the offensive coordinator. We'll see what that meant. Looking to his left, now looking to his right, he'll run. Got room. And what a nice wrap-up. Oh, two, two in a row. Hayden West just buries the quarterback, Jones, into the ground. And was that a first down? It is a first yeah, it down. it was a first down. They were first and 15, and they've already picked it up. But I guess in Colleyville's defense, the clock just continues to run. So Yeah, I don't I don't think Mr. Jones wants to run to the right side anymore. I, think I would gonna come be aware of a number seven. I love what he just did. I just mentioned he's got significant upside, but you know, folks may not realize how hard of a play that is on a shifty quarterback like that, and he, he squared up on him and leveled him. Look into the near side. Pa passes caught. Lloyd reaches in, makes the grab, and Madden Williams is also there to follow up on the tackle, but a nice play by Darian Lloyd to step around the block and make the tackle on Mr. Gehibri Liabamos. Yeah, excellent burst from Darian Lloyd on that play. I, I see why UNT's invited him to come see their game this weekend. How do you find out all that, by the way? What what where is the Godfather getting this collegiate? visitation knowledge well you know reed went through the whole recruiting process and i saw do no coaches and then he trained some athletes here locally well, this is true they're happy to share it well here's a big rush up the middle and who's making the tackle it's the big fella evan naida with the sack but pressure came yes. from the right side and rapolo is limping on the left leg looks like he's going to stay in maybe he got his foot stepped on Along with number 88, Demarius Logan, yes. the sophomore defensive lineman. And if he's only a sophomore, goodness gracious, does he have a future. Yes, he does. And he was the one that got that penetration that you saw, which caused the quarterback to run right into Mr. Naeva. Uh, and to be fair, they both had significant penetration. So Colleyville's running a three-man line up front. Gary, take over. All right, snap back. Toss across the middle. Very good coverage by number 12. That was a, a, no, a short drag route to the slot receiver, number 13. Extremely well covered by the outside linebacker, which was Dax Hebison, which results in an upcoming fourth down. Oh, I thought I needed to say Colleyville first down, but you're right. Okay. 
uh, upcoming fourth down. And so now we, we get to see some excitement because I'm not sure they can get a punt off. And if they get a punt off, I'm going to call it. Burgess is going to run it back for a touchdown. All right, you heard it right there. The godfather rolls the dice. He's calling the blocked punt or the Burgess run back. Well, the punt gets away. Burgess is going to have plenty of room on the left side if he gets it. There he goes. Steps in, steps out, gets a block. Makes one man miss, and oh, Gary, he was close. He was one guy away from spinning out of his hands and taking that to the house, but he takes it all the way back to the 16-yard line, and that's where Colleyville Heritage Panthers will take over with 3.04 to play in the third quarter, up by 39. Well, it doesn't fit, but on first down. <laughs> so really nice run back from Mr. Burgess. Um, Love the confident return, and he didn't go down easily. So now we've got uh, some substitutions. Doug, which sticks out to me, is a left tackle number 67, which is Marco Polito the second. Junior offensive Marco line. Marco Polo Polito. Okay. That's my nickname for him. Okay. We can get it? With that. Marco Polo? I do get it. Okay. Is that a penalty on Colleyville? <laughs> well, number 71 is in the game. That's Joey Steele, but he's been in the game. Joey Man of Steel. Okay. I got some nicknames for the for the second team, guys. I don't get to use them all the time. I was thinking. Tell you Joey. what, they got a flying V up there, by the way. Those guys are way off the line of scrimmage. Bodie Weaver throws it right, nice. left-hand side, and it hits off the helmet of Queen, who's defending Joey Hillard, intended receiver. It'll bring up a second down. Nice route, nice toss, um, good good defense. Now, interestingly enough, the cornerback never got his head around, but there was no. But it, it hit his head. He didn't need to get it around. Well, no the problem. ball hit him in the back of the head. There was no call for pass interference, which is which happened to us. Right, he's already. face guarding. Yeah, well, that's all another story. Coming this way, it's Colin Bennett. Bennett is caught. Usually he's able to outrun that end, but did not do it that time, and he will only pick up maybe a yard on the play. It'll bring up a third down, and we'll call it 14 or 15. Probably 14 is closer. And if Colleyville doesn't get the first down right here, they do have a kicking game that would be interesting to get a little action. Yeah, it'll be into the win. It'll be interesting to see which kicker is selected to kick. Wankambi is out to the left-hand side. He'll go out into the pattern. They'll give it straight up the middle to Ryan Kelleher, and Kelleher will not pick up the first down, but he gets it to the 15, and it'll bring up a manageable fourth down, or it'll bring Landon Dressel into the game to kick a field goal. And it looks like it's going to be Dressel into the game to kick a field goal. So Burgess to snap, Graves to hold, Dressel. We're short. Stephen Cole. Oh, no, that's not. Is that yet? Yeah, it's Cole. Cole runs in. 13, 12. we got plenty of time still. 10. Will somebody need to call a timeout? Because they're not going to get this off in time. Dressel's not ready. 3, 2, 1. Time run out. Nobody sees it. Yeah, we called the timeout. And he made it. Yeah, the problem, though, is that the clock expired before the snap, so we're lucky that they gave us the timeout. So we'll take it with them. Timeout on the field. Back with more football from Mustang Panther Stadium in a moment. Are you serious about your golf game? We are. From playing on tour to more than 25 years of teaching experience, the staff at McMillan Golf understands there is not one way to swing a golf club. Using video analysts, teaching aids, and drills, the staff will customize your learning experience to fit your level of play. Individual group and playing lessons are available. Come now to the McMillan Golf Academy. Back once again at Mustang Panther Stadium. Back once again at Mustang Panther Stadium. Dressel from 31 yards out. Oh, my gosh, he drilled it. No, he missed it. 
but he hit it hard. So Colleyville comes away with nothing, and that's okay. Well, the secret is you know, I kicked a couple times when I was in high school. And what? what? Happened, yeah, 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 yeah. I also won my high school tennis tournament, but I digress. Um, <laughs> Wait but, a second. I didn't think people who played football could play tennis. Yeah, yeah. Well, what happens a lot of times is when you're kicking into the wind, you overcompensate. And you wind up pulling it if you're a right-footed kicker, and you wind up. So do you, did he pull that? Did you? Did, I, I couldn't tell. I, I couldn't. See. I thought he nailed it. Well, he. I'd he say did. he hit it good, he, but it, he obviously did. it did not go through the two yellow posts. So first down for the Parrots, trailing by 39, 131 to play in the third. Hand off right side. Nice. That's going to be shut down. No, it's Ooh. not. Oh. Oh, that almost went for a touchdown. The cutback picks up 10 yards, and that's number 21, Jorge Ruiz. So now some different numbers getting into the game also for C.J. Wilson's Patriots. Or Patriots, Parrots, excuse me. It's a really good play also by number 35, Cross Davis, linebacker senior. Quarterback rolls out, wants to throw, going deep downfield. Better not be a flag there because that was a really good job of putting the receiver on his back and riding him out of bounds. Well, that's an experienced corner, Alex Burke, and I think we're, we're blessed to have him as a senior you know, with the twos. But he got some really good experience last year when one of our corners uh, went down. I think it might have been McKinnon. Um, that's at Oklahoma State. But uh, Dylan McKinney. Dylan McKinney, yeah. Yep. He had, you're right, he had that wide receiver on his back, but his head was back towards the ball. That comes from experience. Second and ten, quarterback rolls out, throws again. This one is hit and tipped at the line of scrimmage, and I believe that was 88 for Colleyville. Once again, Demarius Logan, the sophomore defensive lineman. Very nice play by that young man. You're right, the future is bright with him and a bunch of other sophomores that are getting meaningful um, playing time. 47 seconds left in the third quarter. We're not at A clearly right now. You can see the clock not running on your screen. Yep. Jaden Watkins is in the game at corner. I, I love how he moves. 21, Bryce Abram is in the game. I'm at safety. He's only a junior. I love how he moves. Jones wants to throw. Got a man. He sits down and makes the catch. And I believe they're going to give him first down yardage. That's, that's Shepard on yeah, the catch. That's Mr. Shepard. And I think Heritage will give him that all night. It's that off coverage. So he's going eight yards and just sitting down. And Heritage is very and, willing. And to literally, play. he just sat down. He did, yeah. So first down for the Parrots at the 40. 20 seconds to go here in the third quarter. They'll get one more playoff unless there's a stoppage. Handoff coming left. Room. And a first down run for Saadi Saadi Wasadi. And that'll do it for the end of quarter number three. Colleyville leads it by 39. 49 to 10 is the score. Fourth quarter coming back on the Panther Media Network. Energy, optimum value, serious fitness. Once you've walked through the door at EOS, you'll see why EOS Fitness is the better gym at the better price. You have a dream, the dream of having a pool and a backyard oasis. It's time to talk to the professionals at J. Caldwell Custom Pools. From new construction to remodeling, service, and maintenance, J. Caldwell Custom Pools is your custom pool builder and outdoor living design experts. Your dream of having a pool with spas, fountains, and fire features is about to come true. Dive in and find out more at jcaldwellcustompools.com. Proud sponsor of the Colleyville Heritage Panthers. Plastic We're your neighbor, we're your friend, and when you're at Classic Chevrolet, we consider you part of our family. Enjoy honest, upfront pricing, the largest selection of new Chevrolets in the nation, and fair, competitive payouts on every trade. It's consistently in and out in 30 minutes, uh, no haggling, no problems. Classic Chevrolet, relax, enjoy the 
enjoy the difference. Back in Grapevine, Mustang Panther Stadium. Parrots have it. Jones rolls back, wants to throw. Got a man wide open in the middle. Oh, he is stuck. Did the ball come Incomplete. out? Yeah, he never controlled it. And wait, 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 wait. That was Zach Sogan playing safety. Sogan comes up and puts his head into the, oh, goodness, into the stomach of Keandre Blewett. Yeah, Keandre never fully had control of the ball, and by the time he did, you're right, Zach came up and, and leveled him. You know, Zach played a little bit of a corner, I'm sorry, safety a couple weeks ago when uh, Hayden West went down and, and one of our safeties had gone down as well. So really good experience. Shepard in motion, looking right at him. He'll throw to him. And he's pulling, doing his best Braden Blewett in press, in, 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 imitation, and he gets a first down. Did, did we not talk earlier about how uh, folks would start to run to the ball when he had it? Yep. There are six hats on him. That, folks remember. <laughs> they do, but, boy, when I saw him go in motion, I, and it's just the old linebacker in me. I'd love to just go pick that because you know where he's going. The quarterback literally, right. there is no progression. It's I'm going here. Well, and we're playing him eight yards off the line of scrimmage, so they ought to go right back to him, which they are. And he sits down for a seven-yard reception. But the clock continues to run. And ultimately, it's really not about how many points they score as long as we win. Yeah, he'll get some, some healthy stats from tonight. But those aren't plays that are you know game-changing kind of thing. Well, Colleyville has, for the most part, obviously from the first period, shut this team down. By the way, we have folks watching in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the mountains what? of Colorado, what? New Orleans, Louisiana. Honolulu? Is it? Is that the Valahi family? Honolulu is uh, Terry Sogan Caniford. Oh, so part of the Sogan family. And the mountains of Colorado is... Those eight. are Ulrichs there, aren't yeah, they? Those are Ulrichs, Yep, yes. I knew that. I've seen them before. All right. Nice Shout out to the Ulrichs in Colorado. Hey, when we come visit, you got a place for us to stay? It's almost ski season. All right. Nice play by Matthew Udemba. Third down and four for the Parrots. Spot the ball at the 26. Jones wants to throw. Nowhere to go. Nice. Rapolo is going to bring him down. Very nice. Very nice. He just kind of sat on his back and said, you're not going anywhere, and I'm going to make sure of it. Nice job by number 31 for Colleyville, Joe Rapolo. Yeah, that was a really nice play by senior Joe Rapolo. But the person that made that play, I just mentioned him, is junior Matthew Udemba. He stayed home, so the quarterback tried to release out to the left side, but he could not, and that gave Rapolo the opportunity to make that play. Very nicely done. Looks like linebacker number 34, Ian Muniz, is in, senior. Good to see him get some run tonight. So fourth and 12, I have to believe he's going to the left side. And it's going to be a slant route or a go route for Shepard. Shepard's on a go route. He's looking right. Oh, he tripped him. And he's going to run, and he's not going to get there. Oh, and he's going to fake getting knocked out of bounds hard, but Colleyville's going to take over. No flag there. There was an illegal tripping by the offensive lineman that wasn't called as well. That's all right. Colleyville gets the ball first down uh, around the 27, I believe, they're going to mark it. But did you see the flop there at the end from the quarterback? As he ran out of bounds, he got hit, and he just jumped on the ground. Yeah, number 21, uh, Bryce Abram, gave him a little love tap. Yeah, it was just a tap, though, not, not, not as much to knock him down. But anyway, Colleyville has the football. 9.24 to play in the game. Looks like mostly starters on the offensive line as well. Back to game action. Snap back. Hand off. Colin Bennett going right. He gets kind of hog tied after a two-yard gain out to the 30. We'll actually give him three. Second down and seven for Colleyville. So offensive line looks like Doug 67 is Marco Polito. Marco Polo Polito. Snap back, handoff coming left. 
Bennett gets swallowed up by a nice tackle from Jorge Ruiz, the running back on the other side playing on the defensive side of the ball, which I would imagine C.J. Wilson has got a lot of his best players playing on both sides. Undersized linebacker, but has speed. That's a really good play from him. Of course, they, they know um, first and second down, Heritage is running the football, so they don't have any pass coverage responsibilities. But it would be interesting to see if Heritage you know, allows... Uh, go over the top. Yeah, let, let Bodie... Weaver's going to okay. throw. Looking to his left. Throws it out. Mm. Just out of the reach. They call it no good, but Wanakambi came up with it. Just could not get the feet in bounds, and that will bring up a fourth down and seven. And Colleyville, I believe for the first time tonight, will punt the football. And Luke Ulrich, who wanted to go on to punt, is going to be pulled back to the sideline, and it will be Landon Dressel to kick it. That's really nice protection by the offensive line. Bodie got to... Find his receiver is just a little bit outside, but really good catch by Nicholas Wakambi. Colleyville's got their 11 out there. They've got eight seconds to get the punt off. And they're going to have to do it quick. Four, three, two, snap is back, and Dressel drives this one. Oh, boy, go. This may get to the end zone. Somebody doesn't get there quick. One, half yard line. Look at Burgess, that. who snapped it, is at the half yard line, gets the ball, and where, where did he kick that from? Because that was probably a 70 yard punt. I think the line of scrimmage was a 32, which would make it a 68, 68 yard, yard punt. Now keep in mind, he's 12 yards back behind that, right? Oh, I know where he is, but in a hit at the 20, but it, it had that good top spin on it. So with 7.48 to go. The Parrots probably have their the most grass in front of them that they've seen all season. Ball is at the half-yard line. Now, didn't we have a 99-yard touchdown last week? We did. Not last week, week before. Week before, okay. week before went to, uh, to Braden Blewett. That was an Arlington Heights game. All right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, so more, more uh, twos into the game. Number 92, Julian Stewart. Uh, junior defensive tackle. I like what I've seen from him earlier this season. Under center, they're going to come right up the middle with it. And they do. Pick up around two yards as inside. Not sure who that is under the pile, but they reached out and tripped the runner. They ran right at Mr. Stewart, and he made the tackle along with the linebacker number 34, which is Ian Muniz. Right back to the line of scrimmage, same setup, same play, and they're trying to push him forward. He breaks My out man. the far side and picks up the first down. Man, I like the explosion from this running back. Jones wants to throw over the middle. Got a man. He dropped it. That was Stewart, I believe. And Stewart let it get to his hands and didn't come up with it. And Mr. Sogan put a lick on him. Second down. It was two on two. Two on two. Second and ten now for the Parrots from the 14-yard line. Under 640 to play. And it's a running clock. Are we sure? It's well, it, yeah, it was the incomplete pass. Correct. So this will allow this game to end quicker than normal. Although, because the first period was so long, we're going to have a full game anyway. Jones wants to throw. Going over the middle. Got a man caught. And that's Shepard for the first down. So I realize we're playing a defense and we need to – have discipline within the defense. They're only throwing the ball to one guy. Right. So somebody should come up with an interception here pretty soon. Would it Would it be funny if all of a sudden you bring like four guys over and set him right in front of him and, and cover him with basically your defense? Well, you know, funny could mean humorous and funny could mean odd, so I'm going to say yes. Odd. I'm going the odd route. Okay. Here he is across the middle again. Pressure flushed out. Jones is going to run, and he will get to the 37 and run out of bounds there. 
That was a good spot by the linesman at the 37-yard line. He looked down. He's going to get the ball, and now he's going to go back because he knows where it was supposed to be. 37, he's yelling. So, so some folks might think that, you know, this is the stereotypical trash time, but it is not. This is really good experience for folks that may be needed um, in playoff games. So we talked about a lot earlier about how important it is to keep contain on the edge. I guarantee you our edge on that play will have some, uh, <clears throat> some words coming from the coach around how to keep contain. What's interesting is they've gone away late in the game from their five receiver set. And they're, they're throwing the ball because we're playing off, but they're also trying to run the ball, which with the, the, the more guys up front, they're able to get a few more blocks. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should have done that to begin with. Well, I'm just hoping for both teams nobody gets hurt. Um, this game is really over. Um, get some good experience, but we don't want anybody to get hurt. And with this victory, Colleyville should wrap up the district championship. There's a good pass right through the hands of the intended receiver who got smacked in the back, Daniel Mata. Oh, was it Mata? I thought it was 10. Did I not see a 10? Yeah, it was. It was, it was to number 10. Quarterback can throw the football. He can throw the football. He can run. Um, this team is better than they were last year. They're oh. executing a lot better, and oh, I yeah. expect them to be better next year. So I tip my hat off to Mr. Wilson. Uh, they've, they've got a good future. And we've had some other Fort Worth teams that are looking a lot better this year than they did last year. Cedric Wilson's getting it done at Polytech. Jones over the middle, got a man tipped. Not sure why he ran back for it. He we, threw it, and it hit the ground, so it was certainly. We don't have the classifications um, for the Polytech players. I'm, I'm very much interested in what year the quarterback is and running back number three as well as Mr. Shepard. Well, they've got a fourth down and six now. Count how many people, Gary, they have on the field. There's two, four, five, and five up front. So that's the proper proper amount, 11 players. But they are going to a spread offense here after they've been running the football. And the clock was about to run down, and Cedric Wilson says timeout. Well, Mr. Shepard wasn't on the field, so they didn't know who they were going to throw to. There you go. All right, timeout on the field. Back with more from Grapevine after this quick message. IFC Roofing is a locally owned general contractor and construction company which manages roofing projects hands-on from start to finish. We can also help you navigate each step of the sometimes complicated insurance claim process. If you suspect your home's been damaged by Mother Nature, give IFC Roofing a call and see why they're the highest rated and reviewed roofing general contractor in DFW. Listen, folks, I got a little story for you. But where I get my comfort food when I'm feeling down in blue. I drive down South Wide Chapel to the feed store barbecue. Specializing in insurance for self employed, small businesses, contractors, families, and individuals. Tailor made PPO health insurance. Reach out for alternative solutions this open enrollment. The team at Unified Health Advisors is ready to score a touchdown for you. Back in Colleyville. Check it. Back in Grapevine. Parrots have it fourth down and six. Jones wants to throw. He's got all day to run and a lot of room. Colleyville covered up, and Jones will slide down as Sogan trips. That'll be enough for a, Colli or a uh, Parrot first down, Polytech first down. And, Gary, you are right. Clock continues to run now. So whatever the agreement was at some point, they were going to allow the clock to run, and it will continue. Snap back. Jones looks right, throws right, got a man caught and hit hard. And that's 25 for Colleyville on the tackle. That would be Jaden Watkins. And that special name that I love tonight, Kibri Libamos, with the reception. Okay. Have no idea if I'm saying that right. Nice play by Jaden Watkins coming out of his own, keeping the man in front of him, and then closing on the football hard. Four receivers to the near side, and they stack two of them. 
Where is this football going? Number two, he's man on man on the outside. Yeah, and he's got his rear end to the boundary. That's where they're going. Yeah. And overthrown by the quarterback who saw that. But I'll tell you what, there were three Colleyville Heritage Panthers that started moving that way as soon as the ball snapped. Yeah, I, I, Heritage doesn't care right now. They just want to keep the ball in front of them, make the clock run. If they get incomplete 12 pass. plays of four and the, you get you down to one minute, then they're fine. Yeah, incomplete pass, and they should stop be, the clock. Yeah, it should be running. I've also learned um, that the quarterback, uh, Terrence Jones, and the running back, Saidi Wasadi, they're both juniors. So they're, they're going to be a – Good explosive football team next year. Quarterback wants to throw, caught by Shepard. First down yardage. Blow the whistle. Yeah, right. I mean, what are they doing? That's it's just that's ridiculous. He takes two yards backwards. You're blowing it dead because if if everybody stops and he turns around and runs, you got to say forward progress was stop. I got to tell you, if I'm an outside linebacker, I, I got to sneak. I know I have responsibilities, but I know they're going I'm, to number two. I'm, I'm telling gonna, you, that's a, I'm over there, and I'm picking that. that coach, co coach, you can yeah. get, you give me push-ups <laughs> later. Yeah, I'm going for yeah. six. You might have to yell at me, Coach. Fourth down and a half a yard. They're going to run it straight forward and get the first they down. Yeah. Their version of the Philadelphia tush. Push. Tush push. I hope that's outlawed very quickly. Somebody's going to get hurt from Quarterback that Quarterback is hurt. Yeah. So now who's going to come into the game? Eh, said, said, just stay out there. You'll be all right. Um, hurt his knee. This I is am, this is not smart. I am not okay with that. This kid is visibly limping. Unless he's fooling everybody. Now, now he looks okay. <laughs> oh, who was that that flew right by? Well, he certainly doesn't look like his leg was hurt. 31, was that Rapolo that flew by? He went to throw the football. And Rapolo flew right by, and he runs for nine yards, second and one. As we're about to hit the two-minute mark. Colleyville up by 39. And this quarterback is walking around like me on leg day. Yeah, but he didn't run like that, did he? he about he the time the ball's about to snap, he gets he really, really healthy. Wants to throw. Got a man. Just missed him over the middle, and that was intended for number three, Saeed Wasadi. Or is it Sadi Wasadi? Maybe I actually said it right for the first time. Sadi Wasadi. He's limping pretty good. And it looks like Stewart's going to come in as quarterback. Yeah, how many plays did he leave him in there? Four more? But he's still in the game. He's out at wide receiver. Oh, he stayed on the side. You're right. He's just going to run. First down. Oh, and who is that that came in there late and just buried him? That was number 31. That was Rapolo. I tell you what, that can get you in trouble. But that's why you blow the whistle. I know it. Guys that's the officials. They don't blow it. Not – you know what I have to say? I heard the official, and I, I didn't give their names tonight, so nobody's going to know who they were. But he said, you know, I don't want guys not wearing their pants down below their knees because I want to officiate, you know, in the playoffs. He doesn't belong in the playoffs. This crew does not belong in the playoffs. Let's just put it that way. I don't know how they pick them. I don't know if it's individually based, but not doing a good job of managing this game. Coming up on one minute to play. Jones is back at quarterback. Jones wants to throw. Flushed out right side, being chased. And he's going to go out of bounds. <laughs> I mean, that's a flop. <laughs> they saw it. But why not throw a penalty for that? Oh, now he's going down on the ground. He's hurt. His ego's hurt. His knee's hurt. He wants to come out. Well, he's clearly diminished because, you know, number 35 for us is uh, 
Cross Davis. He took his helmet off, and he's on the ground. Uh, he had Cross it showed really, really good speed. But earlier in the game, you know, their quarterback would have given them much more of a run to get to that sideline. They're going to call a timeout because they have no quarterback. I ought to just take a knee and be done with it. I wish that during the timeout, the clock would continue to run and we'd be done. Oh, goodness. All right. Let's pay one last bill back in a moment. Are you serious about your golf game? We are. From playing on tour to more than 25 years of teaching experience, the staff at McMillan Golf understands there is not one way to swing a golf club. Using video analysts, teaching aids, and drills, the staff will customize your learning experience to fit your level of play. Individual group and playing lessons are available. Come now to the McMillan Golf Academy. I've got one. Would you rather eat at Costa Vida and not be allowed to talk, or you can talk, but you're not allowed to eat your sweet pork burrito? Oh, really funny, guys. Costa Vida means a fresh take on classic Mexican, like hand-rolled tortillas, sweet pork burritos, and honey habanero salsa made from scratch. I'm gonna go order a sweet cinnamon tortilla. Want one? Redefine your favorite Mexican food. Escape to Costa Vida today. Second down and 10 for the Parrots. Ball is at the 22 yard line. Shepard, the exceptional wide receiver, has come in to play quarterback for Jones, who's getting treatment on the far side. And they're about to take a penalty again after a timeout. Snap back. Shepard wants to throw. Got a man. Hey, okay. he looked pretty good right All there. Right. Hits the intended receiver, and they gain. Seven yards on the play. So that'll bring up a third down and five. Yeah, nice toss uh, by Mr. Edwards there. And really good hustle by number 92, Julian Stewart. Number 44, Maddox Moreno. I love how they get to the football. Number 28, Matthew Udemba. like to see Colleyville st stiffen up here on defense and not give up any points. Shepard's just going to, nope, now he's going to throw. And I can't, uh, I don't know what the flag's for. A hold? Yes, it's holding on number 19. Alex Burke. Thought he was beat, but he really wasn't. Well, he, it was really good coverage by him. The receiver ran a kind of a stop and a go. And so what you're supposed to do is be in that wide receiver's numbers. He was in the wide receiver's numbers. So I don't know what the referees want from the corners. I realize I'm biased to corners, but they're supposed to cover, right? It's called cover corner. It's not watch corner. So it's first and goal from the, looks like about the eight yard line. So they either score here or I don't think they're gonna get another playoff unless it's an incomplete pass. Yeah, he's Shepard's gonna run and he'll score. And then he shoves the football yeah, yeah. in Colleyville's right. face and no call. I think I saw a flag. I did. No, that's the football. Yep. But you can see that coming all game. That It yeah. goes back to him throwing the elbow earlier. I'm curious as to why we don't have a running clock still. They're going to go for two. And I suspect he's going to run it. That's what I would guess. Yeah. He's over the line of scrimmage. Oh, the Tim Tebow play. Oh, we were partially right. He did run for a bit. <laughs> I think he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. So it's a 31-point game with, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> they ran three seconds off the clock on the extra point. <laughs> I think we need to figure out our clock operator before an important game happens here at Mustang Panther Stadium because you can't have that happen. 
So what well, I'd like to think is that we, we wherever they kick the ball off, we receive it and we run with it till six seconds are done. And just end the game here. And I'm just now seeing that the uh, the big feather uh, fella, Corn Adams, is coming into the game for this kickoff. And they're going to put him right up front with a good, quick, good hands team. He got in the game last week. Oh, yeah. And they threw him a pass and yes. he caught it on the far side for a one-yard game. All right. He did two plays. He works hard in practice. He, he two plays, and, yeah, I was absolutely, I was tickled to see it. Proud of him. Happy for him. Lifelong memories. Okay, how many guys? Three, six, nine. We have 11. And the good hands team is up front for sure. Yeah, I'm hearing Siona Valahi may have received an offer from Morgan State recently. Morgan or Oregon? Morgan. Morgan. Oh. There's the onside kick. Adams good. lets it go. Good job, Mr. Bennett. Colin Bennett falls on it. And that runs another three seconds off somehow. Don't really know how since the ball hit him and... He was already on the ground, but I have to believe Colleyville is going to take the victory formation here. Next although, time. although, although, and I'm not Coach Edwards, but some of the chippiness would cause me no, no. To, 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 to send somebody deep. Kneel the ball. You don't need fights and that kind of stuff. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, not everybody's on the line of scrimmage. I don't watch them throw so a flag. Kneel the ball. Really good job. And that'll do it. Good job. Colleyville wins it 49 to 18, and they are now district champions. One game to play comes next Thursday. That'll be at Odie Wyatt, Herman E. Clark Stadium. I will not be there for that game. It'll be Trey Francis and. Well, Gary, I don't Green. know if you're in Reed. I'm out of town. You're out of town? Yeah. Wait. I, I'm sorry. I didn't give you vacation. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> Your thoughts on this one? Well, it turned out the way that we expected, um, that Heritage won by 31 points. But the unexpected and positive part is that um, Polytech showed up willing and capable and able to play, and they executed well, and, and Heritage had to um, had to actually play, you know, particularly in the first quarter and early into the second quarter. You know, that gave the starters an opportunity to see what they're going to see in the playoffs, I think, you know, which is teams spreading us out and seeing if they can throw against the corners. And then later in the game, it gave our twos and, and some threes some really good experience. Um, so I think it was a resounding win. I think our special teams played really well. Burgess had a, a nice uh return on a, on a punt, which I think is going to help us in the playoffs. I believe our kickers uh, were perfect all night except for the field goal into the wind. Um, but uh, that, So the special teams was really good. The offense was really good. Offensive line um, should take a bow at some point. Mr. Naida and his defensive cohorts played extremely well um, all night. Um, and we got nobody hurt. right? And that, that's what uh, this is all about. Again, I want to say one more time thanks to you, Doug, uh, for being here on short notice and having a wonderful broadcast I'm hearing both on Facebook Live and YouTube. I know you made an investment to get some more um, equipment and I'm hearing that the, the picture was extremely um, well received um, in HD um, and it allowed uh, parents and relatives and friends from across the globe to see their players, Panteras, um, Pep Boys, um, athletic trainers, all of those seniors that have worked hard uh, for parts of four years to be recognized. So, um, as I said, I don't say a whole lot of positive things about you, but um, you came wow. in, the, in the clutch for us tonight. Well, I appreciate that, Gary. I don't have to have many good things said about me. Just to have something said is okay with well, me. Well, my wife likes you more than she likes me, and I, I'm jealous. So. Well, and that's why <laughs> Carla is my second mother. Not old enough to be my second mother, but my second Yeah, you mother. take that up. For everyone who has been a part of this one, we thank you for joining us. Coach Jerry Edwards, of course, the godfather, Gary Harrison Ducro. I'm Doug Branch from Mustang Panther Stadium. Final score, 49-18. Your Colleyville Heritage Panthers are the District 4-5A, two district 
champions. Next week, it's ODY to wrap up the season. Playoffs come a week after that. Thank you for joining us tonight on the broadcast. We appreciate you listening and watching, and we will say good night from Grapevine.